Hey guys, welcome oh, to no. episode 148 of CMD Towers Brews and Builds. I'm Mr. Comet number five, and my fellow host just spilled all over. And yes, this has nothing to do with a magic card. Big messy tuck. It wasn't that bad, really. Uh, I think, like, I was trying to debate if I should drink from the can or if I should drink from a glass, and I feel like I should have gone the can route, but here we go. Uh, ew, it's good stuff. Uh, and also, here we ew. go over here. Uh, for those who are playing the home game, I might sound a little different, and that's because my power has been off for the last four hours, so I'm recording from one of my rugby, uh, not only my, my rugby teammates, but also my roommate for my upcoming uh, Canada trip. So shout out to Marvin, who's still kind of working in the bait, who's kind of working in the area below me. How are you, Mr. Combo? I'm I'm good, and I'm just excited that we have another Bruce and Patron episode that we're doing, and we Ooh. have uh, King Rickers here. What's yeah. up, Rickers? <laughs> hey, old, glad to be old here. school fan, man, bringing it back. Yeah, I'm stoked. This is going to be a lot of fun. Well, I can't yeah, promise well, that, but well, and I think we have to go ahead and you know, I had to twist this guy's arm to come on here because you know, I guess moving homes is a big uh, you know process, and it takes a lot out of you. Come on, be homeless like the rest of us. It's yeah, exactly. Like living out of boxes over here. Yeah, we can see. I can see you got a few unpacked in the back there, so there that's a nice to start, yeah. right? Did you have to like unscramble and find your laptop and your headset and everything to get ready for today? Uh, the computer was actually the easy part. It was cards. I was like trying oh, to figure out God. where I stashed all my cards. Tried to yeah. not put them all in the same box because it weighed about ten thousand pounds the first time. Well, see, th actually, that's a that's a little trick people didn't realize. With us Magic the Gathering players, yes, we live a sedentary style uh, lifestyle, but you don't realize how heavy our card boxes yeah. are. That's like going up 24-hour fitness over here. So my movie nightmare was I had all of my unco my commander playable commons and uncommons sorted by color and CMC, right? Because I have crippling OCD and ADHD. And then my dad was helping me move. My dad's usually very in control of his body and everything. And I heard like something, like something sounded like it fell out the back of the truck. We were loading it. I was like, okay, whatever, you know, it's probably nothing. And then my dad just opens the door. He's like, ah, uh, so I screwed up. I was like, what? And he had dropped all of those cards off onto my driveway that had all been sorted meticulously. So did you happen to have any of those sort of mishaps with your move? Oh, no. Uh, honestly, one of the smoothest, like, moving experiences. We didn't scratch a single thing. Nothing wow. fell over oh, the wow. truck. It was, it was insane. I was absolutely astounded. But, that, uh, that is very impressive. Yeah, if, if all of my cards got unsorted, I probably would have just, like, quit and started over. <laughs> yeah, you're like, all right, time to, time, time to go trade yeah. in my collection, I guess. Yeah, just <laughs> wheelbarrow is, it up and take it down to yeah. the LGS. Which is kind of funny. I keep getting these ads on, I think it's Instagram, for some company that apparently you could just send all of your bulk into. They'll sort everything for you. And uh, they, like, I think it's something, like, Cards over a dollar, it's like a percentage, but if it's like penny or quarter cards, they charge you like 10 cents. So it's kind of one of those gambles of you hope your high dollar cards outweigh all the oh, trash yeah. that's there. Um, and I've been very tempted, but I know a lot of my un like uh, commander decked cards are absolute trash. So I think it'd be They're, better to yeah. set them on fire for kindling. There's some places where it's like they'll do it by the pound, right? So like for every pound of cards you give them, they give you like a dollar or something like that. So it's better than just sitting around if you're not using them, right? Yeah, that's true. Selling so, cards like scrap metal. Just <laughs> pretty much. Down to the scale. <laughs> Is that what's going to be the future? Instead of homeless people digging for cans and aluminum, they're actually digging for magic cards. Like, oh, I got these like hundred basic lands oh my god, oh my god. Be? <laughs> instead of like uh instead of like finding like a really valuable like wine bottle like oh my god a foil a foil seventh edition forest now i could go and buy a hamburger <laughs> so rickers uh tuck had some questions that we wanted to ask you just to kind of learn a little bit more about yourself um and i wanted to ask the first one how long have you been playing magic the gathering specifically and when did you get into commander and why okay so start of magic uh let's see it was high school and so that would have been like 20 2009 2010 oh, wow. okay. area and um it was more like the i'd always seen the cards um my brother played 
my older brother played when he was younger, but my mom sort of like took all the demonic looking cards out. So he's left with like a bunch of forests and stuff. So that dissuaded me for a long time. And we did Pokemon and stuff, but we, I saw the dual decks and I was like, well, she's not going through all my stuff now. So I bought like the Liliana yeah. dual deck or whatever. And yeah. we, we played with those a lot. And then, so like anything Rakdos, anything Golgari, I'd pick up like a dual deck and just play like whatever was in the box and not really think about it. Never did the LGS thing too much. Yeah. And I just sort of kept those cards and had them forever. And then they just moved with me. It was maybe a lunchbox full of magic cards. And uh, eventually one of my roommates like was super into commander and he's he, i was like oh i play magic yeah we should we should try that out so he let yeah. me play one of his decks and he gave me like his worst cats deck ever and then he sat down with his like over over engineered cranko deck and just lit me <laughs> yeah. up and i was like well this <laughs> sucks dude this is the worst yeah. experience thanks I've ever thanks had. for that much appreciated yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I so I turned it. I was like, I'm not going back to that. No reason there. That that was terrible. And then uh, like three years later, seeing him play with his friends, I was like, okay, now nah, I got to get into this. I probably just have to not trust you to give me the to give me the. But cards. was he the, was he the first one that you unleash unholy hell upon? Great question. Uh, yeah, he was the inspiration. So it's like. <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 I started and I was like, "All right, uh, I'm gonna look up like what's the best deck I could possibly make, mm, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm gonna I'm gonna come at you with that. Like, yeah. what kills I, Goblin it's, it's the just, fastest? It's, it's just the it's just the video of uh, Lloyd Christmas from Dumb and Dumber just shooting that guy in the dream, just going <laughs> die, die, die. <laughs> yeah. That's the deck you want to build. Yeah. And oh, so um, awesome. that was probably like two and a half years ago so oh wow okay kind of so kind of newish yeah yeah uh, the commander journey's not long you made mention so i think the next question you kind of already answered uh with your rakdos and golgari and other demonic now that you're free from your mother's clutches getting into the demonic <laughs> colors are those still this are those still the kind of color combinations that you like to play with or do you kind of go all over the place where, where you add on in terms of like from a deck building or even just like personal preference of color deal yeah, hundred percent. I've always enjoyed like the flavor of the black cards, the the sacrifice loops, all of yeah. the all of the sort of disgusting degenerate things that get somebody at the table to be like, that's not even fair. <laughs> like, <whatever. laughs> yeah, like those are fun. But um, I'd say if it's a color pair, it probably needs to have black in it. Like yeah. if it's three colors, it's got to have black in it. But if mono color, I I mean mono green's hard to beat, man. Yeah, Mono green, green, green just, anything is hard to beat. So yeah, just so much. Oh well, yeah, because green's the new blue. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> green is the new blue. You get a play. I'm fast, just waiting for a, a force of forest to come out. Uh, <laughs> if anyone at the table even gives side eye to green, counter their spells for the rest of the game. Right, play this yeah. card for free. Force like, of forest. Oh, okay, that seems <laughs> seems fair. Yeah, makes it makes it through the cycle every single time. Uh, and then the, I think the last question we wanted to ask you, and I want to, since you've only been playing Commander for the last two and a half years, uh, let, let's more dig into your favorite set. I mean, you've been playing since 2008, 9, 10. You've seen a lot of sets. What do you think was your favorite? And kind of give us why. Okay. Um, currently, easy favorite, not because I played it at the time, but Cons of Tarkir going back oh, yeah. and oh, okay. drafting yeah. that set is so much fun because just I love the limited experience. That was something I got into recently going to the game stores and just doing the, the pass to the right, pass to the left. And then me and my brother tried out Cons and Sealed because we played a lot of M21 and Sealed just to pick up extra cards. But Cons, sure. Cons of Tarkir is just too rad. That's such a cool set. You've got like the the sort of Mongol orc tribes and then all the dudes that fall around the dragons. And then every now and then you just hit a sweet, sweet bomb of just some, you, just get, you, just open, you open, <laughs> you open Zergo pack two, pick one and have to just completely redo your entire build around it. Yeah. And it still works. <laughs> That's, that was the first set that I started playing magic again. Uh, when I started getting into it uh, as well. So yeah, cons, cons is really, is really solid. And you always have well, the chance of opening a fetch, which is incredible. So yeah, well, and now uh, you can play Dominary United with chances to pull, uh, you know, Whatever, Alexandra. So, <laughs> yeah, just ridiculousness. It's madness. Well, Absolutely everyone, madness. Broods of Builds is our deck tech series. Since we have conquered our path to 32 and the 12 pieces of EDH decks, we've moved on to a classic brew from day one, Brews and Builds, with a traditional episode. 
But of course, we do have one of our great patrons on here, which is one of the awesome rewards. But even so, we're still going to describe the brewing of deck similar to how beer is brewed. And yes, my hands are going with the bouncing ball. Uh, and I hope all the YouTube people are like, where's the bouncing ball? And I can't see it. It's there. It's just only in my head. Yeah. <laughs> so here are the four different categories. The first one is ramp and setting your board state. We call that grains. And grains are the foundation of every beer. They include both base malts and specialty malts, usually in a 60 to 40 ratio. This helps with the color, the taste, and most importantly, the content of the beer. Decks always need ways to grow, stabilize, and ramp your under bigger threats. And just like a grain profile, they're usually a mix of staples and specialty cards. Then we have, how does your board interact with the rest of the board? We call that hops. And hops give the beer its patented bitterness and herbal floral flavors. They grow in a variety of strands and help to sing with subcategories like this delicious original copy India Pale Ale from Local Wooden Robot. Our hop choices help clear and interact with the board so your deck can ultimately do what it wants. Then my favorite section, and of course, I should have known this from uh, Ricker's time in the Discord, that he is a quite streamlined player. Uh, how is the deck going to close out and win and do its thing? We call that yeast. And yeast are microorganisms that eat the sugar from the grain and poop out alcohol and CO2. It adds alcohol to content carbonation. Without yeast, you'd be drinking flat sugar water. And without yeast cards, your deck would meet the goal of actually winning the game. And then we have shenanigans. It can be pet cards, fun synergies that are in the deck. That might be fringe, but we still want to have them in. We call that spice. And now every beer has them, but spices and other additives help separate a normal stock beer from a specialty one. It could be the pepper that turns a stout into jalapeno stout. I need to go and change my template because I do not drink jalapeno stouts. I think they're disgusting. Or the additional hops that turn IPA into a double IPA. Not every deck has something that makes it pop, but if it does, this is where we talk about it. And then we do have a bottle capping, which will be Rickers, Tuck, and myself. We're each going to cut. Uh, three cards and add three cards that'll be under five dollars, under fifty bucks at a no budget restriction. We just can't talk about man only lands. So without further ado, let's get brewing. Like we said, it's another brews and patrons episode, and Rickers has bought Grease Fang's garage to the table. So Big Tuck, why don't you read who Grease Fang Obika Opiba boss is and does? And then Rickers, give us the insight to first why you decided to build this commander how you designed your deck without giving away too many spoilers, and maybe just uh, some context on how the deck is played, if you've been able to play it enough. Yes, and uh, luckily, because you're using Moxfield and I'm not wearing my glasses, you can click on the card and it blows up to a size that I can actually read. So Grease Fang, Okiba Boss, is a legendary creature rat pilot. That's a 4-3. It's a rare from Neon Kamigawa. No, Neon Dynasty. Uh, and it's about a dollar, and it costs a colorless, a white, and a black. It's got a very unique ability. So at the beginning of combat on your turn, return target vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of your next end step. So pretty strong here. What made you want to hop in on, on this guy for, for your one of your Orzov's build, maybe your only one? Oh, okay. So right off the bat, um, have you guys ever seen Biker Mice from Mars? I should yes. have pulled it out. Yeah, no. I've got the I've got the VHS I, in a box. Yes, back I here. know exactly what I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. So, so I spotted that and I was like, "That's unavoidable." Just looking at it right <laughs> off the bat. And then, is your so, is your uh, is your next deck going to be Street Sharks based? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, that would be amazing. Just get the whole the whole like cavalcade of uh, weird animals one, one, on one season long uh, Fox animated <laughs> well, shows. Well, I mean, if we're if we're going down that rabbit hole, then you got the next one after that has to be a Beetleborgs deck. Oh, <laughs> that is a deep cut. But uh, <laughs> I actually haven't heard of Beetleborgs, so that's oh, that'll be man. what I have to it's, look up. It's nineties good today bad. Okay. <laughs> Wow, that, that, yeah. that's in line with the rest of the suggestions. <laughs> big bad Beetleborgs. What? But um, outside of the outside of the artwork and how inspiring that is alone, um, I don't have a vehicles deck. You pretty much sure. never play with them. They're they're not normally great, and they they often cost a lot. And the really good ones, people are just like, get that out of here. I kill it, and good luck. Like yeah. So so looking at the way. Uh, Grease Fang plays. It's really cool. You get to use them over and over again, and people have to exile them. And nobody really wants to spend that much time exiling your vehicles. Vehicles, yeah. Because yeah. everybody thinks Grease Fang's the problem, but it's really not that. So the low CMC gets him back out on the board super fast. Um, that, and I mean, it's cool, man. Yeah. Ride on a motorbike. Yeah, well, and <laughs> I, I will cool say. 
I really liked a lot of the themes that you had throughout the deck of like clever ways to leverage Grease Fang's ability, but be able to like tutor the library to the graveyard. Like yeah. most people yeah, exactly. just, yeah. I, I don't think most people building Grease Fang would think of that. They would just more think kind of your initial point of, yeah, stuff's going to get removed. There's going to be board wipes. I mean, for my, in my opinion, artifacts are the easiest permanent to get rid of in all of magic. There's just a litany of removal spells. So it's like, yeah, I mean, that's nice. But the cool, creative way that you have to tutor your library for the vehicle that you want and then be able to easily get it back. Like, I think it's so stupid. Like, Grease Fang doesn't have to do combat damage. Yeah. It doesn't need... It, it's like, not even like if Grease Fang has piloted a vehicle at the beginning of combat return target. It's like, there's nothing. It's just like you play it and then boom, you get the effect. So I, I think there's so much cool stuff it's, you can do with this. It's kind of like playing the OG God Cycle, right? Where like, and for example, like for Perforos, you're not playing Perforos because he's a creature. That's like nice to have. And this yep. like, it's pretty much just like an enchantment that can crew a vehicle here and there, right? So like, oh, I think I that's really cool. All the decks, I've, I've seen this played a couple times before. Like I said, off cast, uh, one of the local guys has one that I think I've seen him play once and it didn't really turn out, but I've seen this on stream and I don't even think they cast their commander the entire game, right? They just had enough juice to keep going. And then when they needed it, like they ended up dying, but they're getting ready to cast their commander the turn after and then immediately go into their graveyard recursion and get going and bring back some like pretty heavy hitters. Yeah, that's the, the hidden, the hidden beauty is that Grease Fang is the engine, but it's nowhere near the scariest thing. So if you can right. just put a bigger threat out then grease fang sort of sneaks under the radar and now it's there just to drive the ship and uh so like parhelion hits the field and then grease fang comes in and everybody's like get rid of that big sky ship and then you just sort of like start bringing stuff Bring it back, back in yeah, yeah. <laughs> sc scooping things out of the graveyard so general question because you also mentioned uh, you like rakdos don't you think this deck would be a billion times better if they swapped out white for red? Because you could do like aggravated assault and then get multiple combats, like and just getting multiple grease fang triggers to bring extra stuff out. That just seems kind of busted. Yeah, I think uh, I think w when you get down that line, you start to realize that maybe the dudes who designed the cards, the the dudes and ladies <laughs> that designed the cards, were thinking about stuff. Because you yeah. look at yeah. them, you're, you're like, man, red would be nuts. Oh, think what would happen if blue was in here? Like, <laughs> right, you know, right, right, right. Everybody would be done for. Well, it and even with red, like, you get access to both the reddies that care about sacrificing artifacts, right? Yeah. Like, you get trash for treasure, like, the list goes on, Goblin Engineer, so they probably thought that. They probably, I would hope they thought that through, and it wasn't just like, oh, hey, guys, good news. You're all getting raises because you made Grease Fang fair because you didn't make it, you put in the effort to not make it black-red, and they're like, oh, yeah, uh, totally, <laughs> yeah, totally, totally, thank yeah, you. I'll totally take that money. Yeah, somebody's somebody's monitor still has a post-it stuck to it that says "No red, no blue." <laughs> <laughs> and then they went through the rest of it after that. So, ha have you got to play this deck IRL? Like, how's it performed? You know, in, in your estimation? Yeah. So, um, I've played this deck in this build probably about five times. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. The first couple times were through spell table. Um, it was it worked fine, but there's there's a piece to this deck where you're trying to like seem like you're not the biggest issue at the time mm -hmm. because because it's that combat step where Grease Fang sort of like piles on issues where mm -hmm. where where you sort of step up. So on spell table, there's way too much people like going through and reading every card and sitting there and not making action super fast. And I think that that sort of metered gameplay does grease fang in a bit but in yeah. person you do get to sneak it out because you don't even have to have a lot of lands out especially if you're running right. sort of the build that i have here with uh with the the pull from library throw and graveyard thing you could be on turn three and then drop a a five a five mana artifact out of your graveyard and everybody's just like that's not fair <laughs> and, <laughs> and you just sort of take out whoever was in the best position as fast as possible from there. But um, I've liked it. It's really, it's really consistent and it's all about whether or not the table hates you, I guess, is, <laughs> is, 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 is how long you get to live. And so, whether, whether or not your name is, is Mr. Combo or Big Talk. And if you yeah. have one of those names, then guess what? This deck isn't going to oh, work. Oh, you, you shut the hell up. You get I left get in games so longer, so much longer than me. 
If it makes you feel any better, this is a, I know this isn't about us, but Mr. Combo, I now know your wrath because I immediately just get targeted at my current play group. No matter what deck I'm playing, they're like, okay, we know like it'll, it'll happen like three games in a row, and then they'll leave me on the last one, and then I'll blow, and then it'll be a blowout, and then the cycle just starts all over again. See, it's terrible. It's like <laughs> almost like you have to be mediocre at Magic to actually be able to be in a game and play. Yeah, I've had those all right. moments. Well, uh, if we wanted to look at some deck statistics, you know, from a CMC, we're slightly above three, uh, which is awesome. Yeah. I think that's great, especially, you know, Rickers, you made the comment earlier of, you know, a lot of vehicles are overcosted. So I think the fact that you've been able to keep your average CMC that low while doing a vehicle tribal deck, I think that's fantastic and great. Yeah. From a mana perspective, you know, it looks like you're pretty... Pretty good there. I mean, about 55% of your deck can produce white, about 48% can produce black. Uh, what, you know what's interesting, because uh, Moxfield kind of does it from this perspective, 45% of your deck needs white. 28% of your deck actually needs black. So, uh, because so much of the deck needs colorless, because it's vehicles and their artifacts. So I guess a question I have to you is have you ever because just because white is that struggle color i feel yeah um, have you ever thought about cutting down your swamp count just because you don't actually need as much black as the deck needs or do you think you need to keep it close to 50 50 just because you know just because and for those playing the home game he has 11 planes and nine swamps so um i keep it close because nothing hurts more than not having that swamp that you need Especially when yep. it's in your commander's costs and mm -hmm. Grease Fang's going to do a decent amount of the work around turn three or four. So I I did, I was trying um, sort of a more, because when I, I thought the same thing, I was like, oh, it's a lot of artifacts, a lot of colorless yeah. mana is needed. Yeah. I, don't, I, I actually was running um, a couple Tainted Lands, or just the oh, Tainted Land, sure. I guess. And then you get it out and you're like, oh, but I can't. I don't have the yeah. swamp that this, turns it on. So it's just, just generating this is, one this is colorless. Just a, this is just a waste. Yeah, yeah like literally is. a waste. So um, I did have to sort of reimagine my mana base. But the other thing is, a f there are quite a few of the black cards that take more than one black pip. So mm -hmm. I, was, I was stacking into maybe ending up with one of those that I wanted to do a little early. And um, I actually haven't had very many issues with lands on the the last ever since i adjusted the mana base after the first couple deals nice so uh um, that's great another reason to have not worry too much is uh i don't know if it's spoiling anything later but there's that aerial surveyor wait for it <laughs> well, let's stop you right there we don't we, we, we don't nerd name cards before we get gotcha. the, the gotcha. different profiles uh well so just something like food for thought I totally I get everything that you've said. You might want to see if there's like three to five black mana producing lands, not necessarily basics, but mana producing lands that you might be able to swap for colorless utility lands. Maybe that's like yeah. a way that you can kind of evolve the deck to the next, next level of, yeah, you know what? Like, I still want to make sure I can hit my triple black pips and my commander always needs it. But I could probably get a little bit leaner because now I can put a strip mine in here or I could put a wasteland in here because yeah. I got this jerk in my play group that always plays uh, Glacial Chasm. And it's just like, well, FML. My deck doesn't work with Glacial Chasm. <laughs> so that, that might be something to kind of think of. And another thing, too, to point out that I was really impressed by, because I think uh, we talked about this before, the cuts were very difficult on this because this deck seems like it's very well streamlined. And it's it, kind of, it came out to only about $120, right? Which in like in this day and age is practically a budget deck, right? <laughs> like, what do, you, what do you boil down to it? So I think like you, I think you either by accident or not came out with like a really good build on like a pretty lean budget. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it worked out pretty well, especially with this being... I mean, it's not the first commander deck I ever made, and it's certainly not the most expensive. So having <laughs> sort of like the the interest in it, and then going through it, and only like you start loading up your cart, and you're you're at like twenty cards or whatever, and it's still only thirty, forty bucks. Right. You're like, oh, sweet, yeah, I'll I'll pull the trigger on that right now. I don't have to wait. Yeah, I to... yeah, I don't need to wait for the next paycheck to yeah. get this thing going. Well, and I feel like Tuck is probably proud of you because one card that's glaringly missing from the deck is Smothering Tithe. I mean, how do you have a deck with white and no Smothering Tithe? 
interesting story there. It wasn't always missing from the deck. It's just that <laughs> what? Uh, that he balance that balance of how much do you want people to hate you? You need people to sort of yeah, ignore yeah, you. Yeah, I get it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Co- Mr. Combo plays every deck, Rhystic Study, Smothering Time, Land Tax, and he's like, why does everyone kill me all the time? I know, it's confusing. <laughs> it is very confusing. All right, well, before we get into the, the deck and start with the Rampant Grain section, uh, obviously we have a patron on, um, and if you guys would love to uh, join Brews and Patrons or just support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash Tower. Whether it's the dollar, the five, the fifteen, the twenty-five, it doesn't matter. Your contribution really does help. It goes to improving uh, the channel, like for example, uh, and getting an awesome soundboard. Uh, but also, Tuck and I being in Vegas at the end of October, it helps kind of fund that trip, plus all the giveaways that we're going to be doing. So, anything you could do, we definitely appreciate it. Patreon.com/slash CMB Tower. So, we're going to start with the first section with the ramp and grain. And I think let's start with Mr. Rickers. Yeah. Uh, we each get to pick two. What was the first card you thought would be key to a Grease Fang build? Okay, so I, th- I feel like I have to. This wasn't the first one, it's my second one, but I'm gonna put it first because I, I ruined it by saying its name earlier. Oh, it's <laughs> okay. You and I <laughs> yeah. both picked it's, the same one as well. Okay, yeah, that uh, <laughs> Aerial Surveyor is cards awesome, just insane. And Oh, Very man. strong, yeah. I've kept one land hands if this was in like my opening hand, just because it's like if I can if if I can make the prayer of like maybe next turn soul ring and turn three aerial surveyor and just take <laughs> off from there, like like we're we're set. It doesn't matter anymore. All planes all the time, just go for it. Yeah, and, so uh, if you guys aren't familiar, aerial surveyor is a two colorless white, it's an artifact vehicle, it's a rare, it's a three four. Um, and it states, it has flying, it takes crew two. So, uh, one thing we didn't say at the top, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with vehicles and what crew means, whenever we say crew two, that's basically, uh, you have to tap a creature and whatever its power is, is the crew number. So if you had two, if you had a one, one, you'd have to tap two one ones to crew the aerial surveyor. But if you had a creature power two or greater, it doesn't matter. You tap it. You're able to turn aerial surveyor into a creature. Uh, But it has flying, and whenever it attacks, if Defending Player controls more lands than you, you get to search your library for a basic planes card and put it on the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Uh, It's a 3-4. So yeah, I agree with everything you said. I mean, if I get this in a planes, in a soul ring, I don't care what the rest of my hand is. I'm probably just keeping it, right? Yeah, I I think so, and um, I I think it's really strong, and this is I didn't choose this myself, but I was looking at this like, I almost think this is good enough for, this is like a borderline potential modern white, like standard, right? Because if you're playing mono white, you're going to be playing creatures. So the crew's, the crew's insignificant. For example, in Odric, it has flying, which is a really strong keyword for that. And it can ramp you out of things if you don't want to pay the expensive stuff for Smothering Tithe and Land Tax. So I think That's this card true. actually has a ton of utility, especially for 56 cents. And yeah, on top I think of all wrong. that, it's a 3-4 flyer. It's yeah, exactly. You <laughs> punch you right in the face. Be clapping. Yes. All right. Be well, clapping. My last card, because I shared with that, was this really cool instant, and I think it just has this beautiful synergy where it's kind of modal for me in this deck. Uh, I thought costly plunder is a super smart card in the deck. It's very good. Colorless black instant common for thirty cents. So this thing's cheap as hell. As an additional cost to cast costly plunder, sacrifice an artifact or creature, aka sacrifice a vehicle, uh, and draw two cards. So it's like, okay, we're two mana, we're instant speed, we're getting to draw two cards, we're getting the one for one, which is always my thing. I'm not paying more than one mana per card drawn. Get yeah. out of here. <laughs> uh, but I love it because it's like, oh, even if it's early game and you kept that risky hand, and it's like, okay, I need to draw into more because maybe I'm stuck on my lands. All right, I'll just sacrifice this artifact, draw two more cards, and Grease Fang will bring that uh, vehicle right back to the battlefield. Very cool. Uh, I also think it's funny that I'm still sort of on dollar deck where I was like, 22 cents? (laughs) That's unplayable. (laughs) Uh, I I think this card's really sweet, too. The only thing I wish... So the the current flavor text is no lock of iron is a match for Raska's Will of Stone, and it's her using someone's arm to break open a chest. Isn't the better one that... Sometimes treasure costs someone else's arm instead of an arm and a leg. There's got to be something better. Like there's got to be some sort of pun in there, right? Not quippy enough. Oh wow! 
I thought that was going to go over a lot. It sounded a lot better in my brain before I said it out loud. So there you go. So Rickers, uh, is this a card that you've been able to actually see in action? And does it play like I'm thinking it does? Uh, yes, it can certainly play the way you're thinking it does early game. But it's not dead late game when you're sort of flush on cards or maybe you're waiting. Because the way I used it, I think it's come up once, was... Um, I had a big vehicle out there causing a lot of issues. Somebody finally hits their targeted exile. You oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then oh, I like that it. was probably yeah. a turn where that card was coming back to your hand anyways. And then you sort of have to do that weird filter out, try to get it back into the graveyard. So you just send it right back, draw two cards. It's back next turn. You're full of gas and you spent two mana at instant speed and everybody's just like, ready to fold and go home. Yep, you're like, all right, yeah. cool. <laughs> fine, fine with this. I'm fine with yeah. how this is going. <laughs> all right, well, Tuck, give us your first green card. Okay, so this is one I can't... There is a lot in here to talk about, um, but one of them is one that seems insanely good, and I can't believe we haven't seen it anywhere. Um, and I think that there... you. I think you have the right balance of draw cards and also a lot of stuff, like Mr. Combo was talking about, putting things into the graveyard. I think Auric Lore Mage is something that should see a lot more play than it does. So two colorless, double black for a creature, human, warlock. It's a 3-3. You can tap, search your library for a card, put it into your graveyard, then shuffle. If it's an instant or sorcery, put a 1-1 counter on Auric Lore Mage. I just think this is insane value, right? Um, I think in this deck, you want these sort of repeatable things, and you want them to always be on creatures so that you can always end up crewing, right? And, I, I mean, I've never seen this in a Moldratha build. I've never seen this in a Torshiro build. And as soon as I saw this, especially for $0.43, cents, it looks like this card is just insane value for the price that you're putting into it. Both from a mana perspective, cost, everything, and the slots. Have you gotten to see this card played? Uh, I have not gotten to play uh, Auric Lore Mage yet. But everything you said is exactly why it's in the deck. It's yeah. one of those cards that I always imagine putting on the table and people are like, okay, I remember that. Can I read what it does? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Let me take a look here. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then um, I think the instant and sorcery gives it a plus one plus one is yeah. like, that's sort of a bummer. Cause you're never going to trigger that. You're always going to be going for right. like something way juicier. But in that weird instance where you don't need it to crew, you're not really looking to, ruin anybody's day yet you can sort of grab one of those and now it now it's harder to target with some quick removal or something so it's definitely modal but it's one of those ones that i'm I'm waiting for it so it's cool obviously one. we could see the synergy with reese fang right right on the card like that's super clear first time i'm genuinely remembering this card existed and i'm just going through lines in my head of like oh you're about to exile my graveyard well let me tap this or go grab a monster mash put it in the graveyard yeah, and then right. immediately shuffle everything back in. Like that's super sexy. And then I'm thinking like, Oh, in my Marin Carador decks in my graveyard, I always run Seedborn Muse in there. Cause it's, it's a good card. Well, now I can throw something in my graveyard every single turn. Right. And I just build this. Oh, that's so gross. I hope terrifying Tyler doesn't see this. <laughs> I, I, I can't go through that trauma again it's a sweet card man like it's definitely gonna be on the list for a couple of decks like i said toshiro and uh and Moldrotha for sure all right well rickers why don't you give us your final grain card you think is critical to your grease bank deck all right favorite one got to play it um syndicate trafficker so that's a, a two mana generic and a black creature aetherborn rogue three one you pay one, sacrifice an artifact, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Syndicate Trafficker, and it gains Indestructible until end of turn. So, just like another Auric Lure Mage, you don't even yeah. have to tap it to do its ability. It's, uh, it's, it's wacky. The artwork is insane. <laughs> Yeah, the I love these. I, this was actually, insane. this was mine until I did a last minute swap because there's another one I want to talk about. So uh, I think this is insane. And I love, I think there's a lot of different cards in black, especially that deal with artifacts from Kaladesh, right? There's like yeah. this weird sub synergy with like Aetherborn sacrificing certain things and all that jazz. And like, I've had a bunch of these in my binders. And I've drew them over the years. And I've always been like, what deck can this go in? And these are all just like perfect slam dunks in here, right? Like, I think there's four or five black cards from Kaladesh that just do insane work in here. So I'm so glad that you talked about this so I didn't have to. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing I like about it is because you genuinely didn't have a lot of sacrifice outlets, like from what I kind of saw going through the deck. 
So I could see Syndicate Trafficker being like one of those where your opponents say, okay, that's a problem. We need to get rid of it. And I just love the fact that it's like, okay, well, I'll just sacrifice my vehicles like I'm trying to do anyways. And now it gets indestructible. So it's just that whole ability of able to protect your sacrifice outlet at instant speed. Like you said, yep. you could literally use this to crew something and still do the effect. Uh, that's just good on all angles. And when it gets bigger, it makes it even easier to crew bigger, heavier things as well. So like that plays perfectly in as well. Yeah, and it's adding counters, not just power, which right, was the right, thing right. that surprised me when I read it, because I was like, add plus one, plus one. Oh, and it's still that big. Like, this card's <laughs> busted. <laughs> yeah, it's insanely good. All right, Tuck, we'll give us your last green card, because so apparently another... you did a last-minute swap. I did a last-minute swap, Um, because I think this is another card that I wanted your guys' weigh in on this being played outside of vehicle decks, and that card's Reckoneer Bankbuster. So two colorless for 4-4 four, four artifact vehicle. It's a rare for about 37 cents. Enters the battlefield with three charge counters on it. Two colorless tap, remove a charge counter from a uh, bank buster, draw a card. Then if there are no charge counters on Reckoner or Bank Buster, create a treasure token and a 1-1 colorless pilot creature token with this creature cruise vehicles as though its power were two or greater. And it also has crew three. So thank again, God, thank God again for uh, Moxfield being able to open that up so I didn't have to try to read that. Without my glasses on. So this card is insane. And I, honestly, I think Mr. Combo in the past is, has shot down cards like um, uh, Ever Ending Atlas or something. Where it's if you control three cards or more that have the same number. It's like two colorless tap draw card. If you control three or more lands that share a color, blah, 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 right? So for me, I love this in a lot of ways. It, replaced, it, it almost replaced itself on mana value. It replaced itself on card draw the turn that you play it. It then crews itself and gives you another body. And in this deck, if you really need the card draw, okay, fine, it's not the best ever, but I'm going to sacrifice it to one of my sack outlets, reanimate it with Grease Fang, and then at least draw a card off it, right? And then kind of go through those loops together. So in this deck, I think it's really solid. How do you guys feel about this deck, be, be, this being played in other non-vehicle decks? I'll let Rickers answer that first. Um, non-vehicle decks. So my favorite part about this card is actually relevant when we get to another section. But um, <laughs> sure. In non in non-vehicle decks, uh, I think just anytime you get the the pay to draw a card on something that's in on the field already, it becomes a lot easier because it's not the same as like paying two to cast a spell that draws a card. You're not right. losing any cards to draw that card. So. Uh, that's obviously just like crazy powerful all on its own. Um, yeah. Whether whether you ever swing with the four four, I know there's plenty of things that like if you were gonna run this in maybe a proliferate deck and you felt it was worth. Oh your time, sure, yeah. Like that could be cool. Uh, I haven't messed around with charge counters and at all ever. <laughs> so so <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't played you haven't played a deck yeah. based on magistrate scepter. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much just cashed those specific charge counters in, and I haven't looked at any other ones. So. Uh, um, I'm going to lay this out real easy. This is not some slam dunk in non-vehicle decks. It is not you don't think so? Or, no, absolutely not. So here's the thing. It's amazing in this deck, regardless of the vehicle piece, because of the fact that his commander, because you can sacrifice it, then his commander could bring it back and it'll come back with new charge counters on it. So let's, let's take this Grease Fang out of it. Would I run this in my SRAM deck? Nope. Probably not. Really? Um, it's SRAM? It's a vehicle, for God's sakes. Who cares? SRAM draws me enough cards on his own. Uh, the card draw is inconsequential. I'd rather spend my mana to get more vehicles out. Uh, for the non-vehicle decks, what are you going to do with your pilot tokens? Nothing. They will be sacrifice, sacrifice them? They're chump blockers? They okay, get treasure sure. powder. Sure. You get it once. You get it once. So basically what you're telling me is that you want to pay... Two, four, six, eight. You want to pay eight mana over three cycles to draw three cards and get one treasure token and one pilot. I don't know. No, I still think I've, I mean, I've, I've, seen in, I've seen this. I've seen this in play, and this card's this card's bunkers. So, uh, or should I say, it's bankers because <laughs> uh, it's the bank buster. So I don't know. I, I think that this this one and the aerial Sur surveyor are the two that I the two vehicles I would play in other decks. That's just me personally, but what do I know? I am a, I am a known maniac in this world. That is true. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap up the grade section. Before we head over to the next one, we'd love for you to check out our store. It's at Etsy.com. If you just search CMD Tower, you'll find the amazing store on there. 
hopefully, uh, by the time you guys hear this, we will have updated art. You guys should go check it out. We might even run a sale next weekend uh, because we are uh, getting to see Matt Nance this weekend, and he's uh, doing a little photography for us. So anything you guys do on there, literally all the proceeds ain't actually going to pay for the gear that, that you guys uh, had requested. But at the same time, any of the profits do go into improving the channel for all the stuff we talked about with our Patreon. So just remember, Etsy.com, just search CMD Tower. Quit typing Command Tower, all spelled <laughs> out. I swear to Christ, if someone says, yeah, the guy's over at Command Tower, we're not Command Tower! <laughs> it's CMD Tower. Tower! Jesus her, Christ! Her name is Christina. <laughs> Christina! You <laughs> say it! <laughs> say my nice name! <laughs> all right. Well, guys, after that, we're going to head over to the hot profile. And I'll kick this off with probably a card I have talked trash about. Because I think it's fine. I think it's fine. It's an instant speed fog. But I love it in this vehicle deck for all the little pilots it produces. We're talking Ink Shield. Oh, my God. This card's incredible. I, I know. People love the card overall. I, I'm whiffy on it. But I love it in here. So, three colorless Orzhov, white and black. It's an instant speed rare wow this card's expensive yeah uh, eight plus. plus it states prevent all combat damage would be dealt to you this turn for each one damage prevented this way create a two one white and black inkling creature token with flying so the reason i absolutely love it for this deck i wish i could run this in my sram deck if i had black because those two ones even if you're only preventing i don't know six damage which i don't know why you would do that and waste this card on six damage but still let's yeah. use that as like an absolute floor uh because maybe you're gonna get knocked out of the game or whatever that's getting us 12 power that in theory would probably be able to crew between three and four vehicles easy that's an extreme value because i could see and i did see in your primer that getting tokens is one of the struggles, getting enough pilots to be able to crew. I don't know, uh, Rickers, if you've gotten to the, well, I'm going to crew this vehicle so that I could tap that and yes. crew to this vehicle. And then go <laughs> crew three vehicles. Trans <laughs> it's, uh, it's Voltron. Three vehicles crewing each other. <laughs> uh, uh, so this definitely kind of assists in that. Have you been able to do Ink Shield in this deck specifically and has those extra Inklings been used to pilot or are you just using it to smack face in the air? Oh, 100%. So, I've ink shielded against four damage, which felt awful, but, <laughs> but but coming back with, like, eight extra power on the board, uh, it, it works out. The other thing that um, this deck in particular does really well with cards like ink shield is maintaining seven cards in hand doesn't feel bad towards oh, the late sure. game, because you draw... And then if you don't use any of your cards and you just mess around with your board at the end, you get to pick something out of your hand and discard it. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then so, I mean, it's really hard to do because obviously there's plenty of turns where you're like land, artifact, <laughs> something else. And then you're going to yeah. spend the next four turns trying to build back up to your full hand. But it makes it easier to hold on to ink shield when you're waiting for that. Like somebody's going to try and kill me and then I get to make like 23 of these guys and ruin everybody's day. Before Tut goes, I do have a quick question for you, because um, this just hit me. With the up to seven cards, have you ever, opening hand, been like, oh my gosh, I need to get this in the graveyard? And have you just done the, okay, turn one, pass, discard down to hand yes! size? Have you uh, done that with this deck yet? Yes. Yes, I have. And it yes! it, it pisses everybody <laughs> off. It's that same it's that same feeling yes! when the model red player is like, uh... I, uh, I'm not going to play. I'm just going to move to discard phase. And they throw anger in the bin. And everybody's like, no. come on. The best <laughs> is you do, the best one is that you play an Eractos deck. You intentionally play Reanimate and Heartless Hidetsu. And then you tur then turn turn one. Doesn't matter what you draw. Bin it. Turn two, swamp. Turn turn two, Heartless Hidetsu. We're all losing this game together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, so, yeah, what do you I'll, think I'll be, about Ink Shield? Oh, I think it's incredible. So um, I think this is borderline like a staple in most Orzob decks because you either have Sacrifice Potter, this saves you the game. Uh, you can use it proactively or at the end of the game when you're just out of cards and you have this, it's like a Teferi's Protection, right? That you can just come back and win off of. So um, if you're playing in decks, if you're playing in groups that specifically don't win through combo and are mostly like aggressive, this is something that's just going to just gonna be bonkers for five for five mana, just waiting on, on a turn to win. For sure. All right. Chuck, what is the first hop card you wanted to talk about? So I was really surprised. I think I know why they did this. 
Um, because if this is an artifact, I think it'd be too good. But you are going to be tapping stuff, right? You might have to tap multiple things, multiple creatures, that thing. One thing in uh, one thing that I've noticed in vehicle decks is you don't generally have a lot of defenses because you're having to tap down all your creatures to get your vehicles going and that sort of, that sort of thing. So I think Drum Bellower is such a slam dunk in here. So two colorless and a white for a creature spirit. It's a 2-1 with flying, and it reads, untap all creatures you control during each other player's untap step. So again, a lot of these crew abilities, you're going to be having to tap down the good cards that you want, like maybe some defenders and that sort of thing. But there's also a lot of vehicles that when they're creatures... You can make them creatures and untap them and get their value out of them again, right? Like, I again, not to go back to this, but like Reck Reckoner Bankbuster is a lot better if you can make it a creature and then be able to draw all those cards out in like a single turn cycle if you have the means to do so. So the fact that this this powers into that and also gives you those defenders, which you will need in this sort of build, Drum Bellower is insane. The reason, the thing I was saying, it's just kind of surprising me. It's a spirit as opposed to a vehicle or some sort of artifact. But I think if it was an artifact, it'd probably be a little too strong because it's a little, it's maybe a little too easy to tutor out, or if it's an artifact creature, so on and so forth. But again, slam dunk pick in, in the hop spot in the hop section. Rickers, have you has the defensive like have you been able to see Drum Bellower and is the uh, untapping your creatures? So I'll uh, I'll talk more about it later. But this is a card I'm going to be kiboshing from the really. Deck. Um, but, you know, has it done what Tuck has described? I mean, has it really helped you build, get your defense back when you've tapped everything down to crew? Um, yeah, I know why you want to kibosh it, too. Because you can't <laughs> crew before it triggers. And... You don't do anything! <laughs> <laughs> and everybody always points that out, so they ignore it. And then it sticks around, and it's sort of, it's like, your Grease Fang pops back up, and then you tap him again to to crew some big robot and then your robot stuffs their attack and nobody really understands that it's drum bellower's fault at the end <laughs> of the day so so i've en i've enjoyed it um i i think you're right it's not it's not like the heaviest hitter in this section for sure it's certainly not pulling um a crazy amount of weight but it does do almost exactly what tuck mentioned and it's just you get a couple of creatures back to sort of sit around and then people have to evaluate their attack a little bit better because you want to tap out on creatures just to swing out. And then you're fully tapped out and everybody expects you to be open every turn. Mm -hmm. And drum beller just sort of turns that around. Gotcha. Hell well, yeah. Rickers, what was the first hop card you wanted to talk about? So the first one I want to talk about is fleet wheel cruiser. So oh, okay. It's a, it's a trample haste vehicle. Um, It'll get haste from Grease Fang, but you sort of get that cool where maybe you want to hard cast it. And then when it enters the battlefield, it enters as an artifact creature instead of a vehicle. And it's a 5-3. So you sort of want, like, you throw it down, and then you immediately, you don't have to crew it, just slam for 5. And hopefully somebody blocks it out so it goes to your graveyard and you get to do it again next turn. Because even when Grease Fang reanimates it, you don't have to crew it. So the idea is that if it sticks around... Like that's the worst case scenario that nobody's killing it. So it's, it's just it's like a spell for five damage almost. Yeah, it's like it's it reminds me of like ball lightning, right? That it's just reusable yeah. and reusable and reusable. People are gonna have to like even if even though it's not commander damage, five is still a fair amount, right? Especially if it's turn over turn over turn. People are gonna have to make bad blocks on this and you don't even care if it dies because you can just do it again the next turn. So and yeah, it's got that trample. So yeah. They only have I'm to block for three, three power, and the people with three power normally don't have five defense coming off the other end. So you're always you're you're just pecking away, just sort of irritating. So I, I, I guess, and I do this to Tuck all the time. And I don't know if you pick up on it, but I like to roast people when I don't think <laughs> they've done the categories right. So I'm gonna roast you. <laughs> How is Fleet Wheel Cruiser a hop card dealing with your opponent's board state's hands? How is this helping you interact with them? Because really, I just see this as a yeast card because you can literally, like you said, it's five damage every turn. And if it dies, who the hell cares? Um, or you can even say it's a brain card from the aspect that it's an artifact creature. There are some things that you could do with sacrifice effects and get value around a creature. So how is it a hop card, though? Help, okay. help, help old man Mr. Combo understand. So I guess I guess the the younger generations... <laughs> 
um, are coming in. And what I saw when I put this in hops was that it's going to force them to use their board state to interact with it because nobody can just sort of sit there and accept five damage. Like that's what is that in a in a forty life game? So that's okay, yeah. Yeah, 20, so so much percent of their life total every turn, so they can't just ignore it. They have to use their board to interact with it, or their hand to interact with it, and it's got that inevitability, the trample, the haste, and it doesn't need to be crewed. It's got a crew cost, but you're, I'm not using it. And if I am, it's two. It's sort of inconsequential. So it's all about, like, if you're comfortable with your board, I'm going to send Fleet Wheel Cruiser at you every time. And I want you oh. to have to sit there and maneuver around having that in your face every time. Like, what, am I going to kill it again? Is it just going to come back? Like, mm -hmm. sort yeah. of. Hey, sort look of at that, this. That These young game. kids coming up with new ways to talk about <laughs> stuff. You youngins. All right. Well, my last one. I think this is a pretty, pretty cute card. Uh, I like it because it has an ETB effect. It's a vehicle. And it's going to target, remove creatures and planeswalkers. Um, and I, I just absolutely love it. So Surge Hacker Mech, so cool. Oh, I need yeah. to get this for my SRAM deck, hands down, because it's awesome removal. Four colorless artifact vehicle rare. And grab a copy for nine cents. It's a 5-5 five, five with crew four. It has menace. When Surge Hacker Mech ETBs, it deals damage equal to twice the number Jesus. of vehicles you control to target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. Um, I look at this a lot from the same mindset as your fleet wheel, but it's more of, oh man, there has been these issues. Okay, before you're in step, or even during your own turn, I guess, let me sacrifice this, get some value. The My commander, Grease Paint's going to bring it back, and now I'm bolting whatever the issue was for me. Um, I, I really, really like that. So um, have you been able to, like, what's the most damage you've been able to do with Surge Hacker Mech? Because in my head, I feel like you should at least be doing eight. Like, there should be four yeah. vehicles out, including Surge Hacker, every time. Yeah, so the the damage equal to twice, like, eight, super easy to hit. But yeah. you, you don't feel bad launching it when you only have two vehicles. Because you throw it down, you, you zap for four. And then hopefully everybody hates it and it goes to the graveyard. And then the next time, like you play a vehicle and then move to combat and zap for six this time. And I think the most I've gotten off of one activation of Surge Hacker ETB is probably um, eight or ten. And that's and, but but that's like what's that uh, that exponential increase? Um, oh yeah, like variable. Like it, you did you did ten this time, but you did eight last time. You did six the time before, and then so you the amount of damage. Like this guy's responsible for whole whole player deaths for sure. Just like you don't have a board, people are coming in to swing at you. You're wide open the rest of the game. Last Sick. comment I'll make before Tuck gets his thought. I wish it didn't actually say opponent. Because it would be so much fun to run Stuffy Doll in this deck. Oh, no. <laughs> and then you target your own Stuffy Doll to like, because that's the one, I think that's the downside you could say about Surge Hackers, you can't target a player. So like, if there was a way right. you could work around that to actually, because it might get to the point where it's like, okay, guys, you keep Surge Hackering mech us, just don't play creatures, let's just figure out right. other ways to get rid of Rickers. Player removal, right? Yeah, player removal yeah. is the best removal, so let, let's do that. It's like, oh, aha, effers, let's go ahead and do it this way. Uh, I, I think that was pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a sweet card. I think the fact that like some of these, some of the vehicles that are so so with their stats, I think are like to again reference <laughs> Reckoner Bank, Bank Buster. It's just a four four, right? So this one, the fact that it has menace is going to force people not only to take damage to remove creatures, but then have to think about how they want to block with what creatures they have left over. So I agree. Like I think this is like a really good targeted removal that's like very easily repeatable. Cool. Well, Tuck, give us your final hop card. I've liked this card since it got printed. I almost tried to build it as a commander. It's damn near impossible because I refuse to put time into it. Um, but this man will turn everything he touches to gold, which is what they call the what, Mr. Combo? Uh, the Golden Touch? The Midas Touch, or in this case, the Makar Touch. King Makar the Gold Cursed. Two colors, double black for a 2-3 legendary creature. Human. Uh, it's a rare for 56 cents. Inspired. 
Whenever King Makar, the gold curse, becomes untapped, you may exile target creature. If you do, put a colorless artifact token named gold onto the battlefield. It has sacked this artifact. Don't tap it. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. For those playing the home games, golds were first, then treasures came around and ruined the entire format. So I think this is like, again, it kind of goes back to the same thing of if you're tapping creatures already to get your deck to go, having them have this ability that when they untap or when they tap or whatever is so critical, right? So the fact that every turn um, and with drum bellowers multiple times per turn or multiple times per rotation, you're going to be exiling th- exiling cards, even if they're indestructible, and getting value out of it. To me, it's just completely bonkers. So I think this is like a really inspired pick for this deck and just has piles and piles of value that you're going to see over the entirety of the game. And you don't even need, like, you can do this as soon as it comes out effectively when if you have another cr- a vehicle that can immediately crew, right? It'll happen the turn it comes out. You don't have to wait for it. Yeah, uh, King, King Makar is nuts he's he's, it's the king is the king of the deck he's 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 super rude uh nobody (laughs) likes it it's so much fun um i would like to note that golds are so much more broken than treasures oh (laughs) they totally are yeah it's yeah they're way worse they come in tap they just just didn't make enough of them so (laughs) i think there's there's been some talks of like they're gonna start printing cards where it's like all treasures come into battlefield tapped just to like stop it and then gold's gonna be the new thing that they're gonna have to like this these cards like this are gonna skyrocket but who freaking knows treasures suck but they're in like every deck i play so what are you gonna do i don't like it though (laughs) I don't like it. All right. Well, Rickers, why don't you give us... Oh, and I have nothing to add on King Makar. You've literally said everything. I think it's so cool that you're able to take, like, this very, what I would call, sweaty mechanic of Inspired. Mm -hmm. Typically, the thing is, like, you're throwing it in harm's way and hopefully it doesn't die. So that is a super inspired, haha, pick uh, for this deck. Nailed it! Nailed it! All right, Rickers, what's the final hop card? People need to know. All right, I'm um, I'm upset you guys missed it. Um, cranial plating. Oh, it's, it's so good. Yeah, I mean, come on. Like, what is there to what is there to miss? It's just a and medium slam dunk. Guard. It's a yeast that kills Actually, people. All right, so okay, so I'm gonna sorry just to, just to, just to gang up on Rickers for a little bit. I usually don't. I am not as as people know in the podcast. I take the I take our uh, categories. Some would say quote unquote fairly loosely. <laughs> So usually I am in defense of the people that will, I'm usually in defense of like, you know what? Sure. I can kind of see it. No offense. Mr. Combo is 100% correct on this. How is this not a yeast card? This is how you win the game with any of the artifacts you control with equipped one. It would be incredibly facetious of me to put up a fight here. (laughs) (laughs) At least least you admit it. (laughs) Uh, So I did mention when I was building these out that I've never organized the deck this way. But when I looked at it, yeah, because because it's 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 like looking into it's like looking into the valley of madness. We've been yeah, doing this for yeah. almost three years. So. Try to put on my tuck glasses to organize. Yeah, the deck. yeah, exactly. God, they make me go cross-eyed though. Um, so <laughs> hey, <laughs> so but I if if I had to defend it, I would say something along the lines of what I said for the last one, where I'm now able to crew all my vehicles if i have enough black mana to throw this thing around i it doesn't matter how strong anybody is they're all my vehicles are going somewhere and now you have to block into it or or answer the artifact somehow but you're you're totally right it's too it's too strong (laughs) like that's such a ridiculous argument on this specific card where with the with the car at least i'm i have to do some of the work yeah yeah yeah. And I'll say, Rickers, if it didn't have the attach effect, which I, I get it, that's what makes cranial plating amazing. But if it just had a quip one, it's like you could have more of an argument for the hops because it's like you do kind of telegraph it. And it's like what you said, like yeah, I'm yeah. forcing you to come in on my 12-5. You better do it or more than 25% of your life starting life total is gone. But it's just more the fact that you could pay black, black. It just, it's just speed yeah, it's wherever speed. the hell you want to. It's so yeah. dumb. Yeah, and this—I mean, this is two two like last thing on this is like this is probably a card why you want you want to make sure that you can activate double black right because this card is going to be so backbreaking when you can. Hundred percent. This guy May Car, uh, what's his name, Auric Lore Mage. Those double blacks—they're just too strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time. 
ah, now this is making me like alter my like freaking bottle capping for like things that are like able to abuse this. Ooh. Oh, I, I, right. I, I did. I did one when we started talking before. And that's if you saw me, I was like looking all over the place. Like I just like had a, a rush of inspiration. That's why. It also kind of sounded like you said a Russian inspiration. And it's like, oh, he's a Russian now. I always knew this day would come. OK, so real quick. This I'm sorry to do this tangent. There's someone on our on in my company I work for who 100% was wearing a Russian pride sweatshirt. Oh god. In Russian. I'm pretty sure she is Russian and by that I mean she is. And people I was like whatever. People are upset. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap up the hot profile. And before we head over to see how Rickers is going to beat his opponents into submission, uh, we would love it if you guys could go to abyssproxyshop.com. And if you use code CMD Tower, you will get 10% off. Uh, they are the playtest sponsor for CMD Tower. They produce tons of cards. The biggest tip I can give you is if you type custom into the search bar, you can actually gain access to the entire catalog of requests that they've done for people out like me. So if you wanted to get my Game of Thrones deck, all the uh, proxies and playtests are on there. Same thing with my Missile Coal Archive Warrior deck with a lot of the Japanese woodblock arts. Tons of stuff on there. I need to start going on and ordering some cards because I think I'm going to start offloading some of my reserve lists a bit. Uh, and yeah, everything you guys do there will get you 10% off and it'll give a little bit back to the channel for the consistent story we've talked about of improving the content. And my remember, cart... <laughs> My cart is currently at $153. You're never going to place that. You're never going to do it. Uh, I actually need to with my reserve list cards. So that's why a lot of them, that's why it's so expensive now. <laughs> but uh, just remember, guys, abyssproxyshop.com and use code CMD Tower. Now we're going to head over to how this deck is going to close out and win the game with East. Well, there's only a handful of options here. So instead of us going uh, like, Try to do this game of who did what. We're just going to go <laughs> alphabetical order and just make it simple. So, Big Tuck, why don't you start with the first card on the list? Okay, so this one, obviously, I think a lot of these don't have a ton to talk about because they're just so good. Uh, this is the first one, Arm and Armored. So, a colorless and a white for an instant. It's 15 cents. Vehicles you control become artifact creatures until end of turn. Uh, it also has the text of choose a dwarf you control, attach any number of equipment you control to it. Yeah, and it's yeah. my understanding is looking through the deck briefly is I think you have maybe one or two dwarves and one or two equipment. So perhaps you can sneak out a, a win with a dwarf and cranial plating in some bizarro nightmare <laughs> circumstance. But <laughs> overall, I think we all know what's going to happen. You're, you're going to run out a bunch of even if you if you get board wiped from your creatures and you can't crew, this is going to turn the five or ten artifacts that you have on the board into your win con right there. So, gotta have it, I think, in mono white or in any white artifact deck. So, pretty pretty straightforward on that one. Yeah, I would say um, if if I have Aether Shield Artificer on the field and I cast this, two people lucked out because I'm definitely going to try and kill somebody with the dwarf. Instead <laughs> of... <laughs> two people got lucky. Yeah, yeah. This is all my inf all my uh, brain cells are going towards using the dwarf to kill somebody. So the, the question I have for you guys is obviously it's a slam dunk at the vehicle side. Like, you know, because vehicles, yeah. you might have like four or five, six of them, maybe not enough creatures to crew. So absolute slam dunk. Let's look at the reverse. Would you guys run this in a deck that had dwarves and equipment? Like, is it good enough considering it's a choose a dwarf you control versus all the vehicles? Rickers I, looks like he's saying no. I personally don't think so because that deck's going to be white red. And yeah, it's it's just a Paula, got, right? You, yeah, you've got better. Well, may, even if it's not like a dwarf deck, like some Boros combat decks have dwarves in them, and that's where attaching the equipments would come in. You're probably going to be running like Balan, the Wandering Knight, or something that just does it better, faster, and easier. And this is like <laughs> a card slot for two mana that you're ignoring. <laughs> the first half. I mean I'm ignoring the second half in the vehicle. Yeah, half, right. So that, it's, like so it's, seven, a, it's, it's the opposite problem. <laughs> yeah. But I get like seven creatures out of it where you just get like one super dude. I think there's in the in the running club called hashing that I do, whenever someone's so this is to no one's surprise has happened to me on many occasions. If you're just like plattling on about some story that people have lost interest, uh they'll say like funnier, faster, or sexier. Come on, like it's gotta be funny, fast, or sexy. What are the three things, guys? Let's let's wrap this up. But I kind of feel it's that way, right? Like 
this card is only fast in this deck, and it might be funny or sexy in another deck, maybe. But yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty narrow. All right. Well, Rickers, why don't you go with the next one on the list? What's that card? One down from there would be Loshiel, the Clockwork Scholar. So and, good. Uh, two and a white, legendary elephant artificer. Uh, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to attacking artifact creatures you control. And whenever one or more artifact creatures enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This triggers only once each turn. It's a 2-4. And uh, preventing all combat damage and drawing a card whenever you trigger your commander is insane. And your yeah. commander triggers off phases. You don't even have to try to trigger your commander. It just happens. Yeah, this card's really good. I think it's like this has been something that got printed recently that's going into a lot of artifact decks. So I don't have a lot to talk about it. It just lets you attack with impunity over and over and over again, which is what this deck wants to do to close it out. So I guess the, the one question I have on this card is because it's the artifact creatures entering the battlefield you under your control draw card. Do you just basically ignore that? Because you don't have a... Hun no, that are going to enter guess. the battlefield as artifact creatures. That's true. I I totally missed that when I explained how uh, it would work in the deck. So, yeah, I mean, but at the same time, there's a couple other things in here that can trigger the artifact creatures. Um, yeah, you more or less ignore it as far as why it's in the deck. The preventing combat damage was enough for three mana. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and, and I agree. I'm definitely not trying to say cut the card. Now, I would say if this was CMC5, oh. I'd probably say cut it. Yeah. Um, because because the top half isn't good enough for five mana, but it's something like you know Tuck and I always talk about. It's like okay, if that was on an enchantment, would you run it? Just three mana, prevent all combat damage to be dealt to attacking artifact creatures you control. And it's, I'd say yes in a vehicle yeah. deck, I would run that for three mana. Dolan's Gate costs two, and it's an artifact, right? So it's like I think this, is just, I think this is just fine for that. And it's and it's something that this. I think another thing that's critical here is this is crew. This is crewable, right? This can crew something else or add to crew. So, um. Yeah, I, I agree. Even though you're getting half of it, it's still pretty solid. All right. Well, the next one on the list is one of my favorite board wipes I've seen in a while so for <laughs> this vehicle deck. Organic Extinction is so good. Yeah, it's bonkers. Uh, eight colorless, white, white, sorcery, rare. It has improvised, though. So your artifacts can help cast a spell. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mandate abilities pays for one colorless. Destroy all non artifact creatures. So some might say, well, Mr. Combo, Big Tuck, didn't you just rip Rickers for, like, putting stuff in categories that it doesn't make <laughs> sense? Ah, ha, ha. But I have a vehicle deck, and I know that you would just crew all of your vehicles and then play this, board wipe everyone, and then you're smacking for major face. So yeah. this card's bananas. Bails you, out of, bails you out of issues. The only thing that sucks is if you get, like, in the mirror match, if you're playing Boros artifacts or something, which are kind of popular, then it's kind of stinky. But in any deck that, in any other deck where you're playing against creatures that are swarming you, this is going to completely save your ass and t then end up winning the game the next turn. Yeah. Um, I would say there's never been a more dead card than when I went up against uh, my friends. What's that? That Golem from Strixhaven. The red white golem that Oh my that boy Alibu. 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 Yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's got, a monster. He's got a, he's got a he's got a shitty mana rock tribal Alibu deck that I had this in my hand and I was like, there's nothing for me yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. so this, like, this is this is this is this might as well just be all flavor text. <laughs> but outside of that, yeah, you wipe the board you crew, you wipe the board, and then you kill the biggest problem at the table and you move on. And yeah. it's it's yeasty. So yeasty when you do it yeah, that so way. Yeah, so yeasty. <laughs> I can, I can, I can taste it. I can taste yeah. the yeast. All right, Tuck, <clears throat> you're gonna go with the next card. But before you read the card, I want everyone to acknowledge in the art that that's a Boros symbol on the vehicle. How the hell isn't this a Boros colored card? Continue. Uh, it's a great, it's a great question. Uh, but we do have our pal, best, probably the best vehicle that's ever been printed, besides maybe baby Thopter Copter. Uh, or scooter looter scooter a par healing the second two six colorless and double white uh aka free because you bend this to your graveyard immediately for a five five legendary artifact vehicle flying first strike vigilance whenever it attacks create two white white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are attacking it's not attacking the same person crew four so again if you're this is the vehicle card right like yeah. this is it this is like the this is like the build around it's completely bonkers if you're playing vehicles, you've got ways to cheat this in. No no big thing there. This is going to win you the game, right? Like, five damage. When you when you play it, 
uh, you're coming in with what? 13, 13. damage on the face yeah. that you get to keep and do every turn. Completely, completely bonkers and completely insane and strong. Well, Tuck, you're wrong there. It's not just keep doing it every turn. You just increase it by eight power every turn. Oh, yes. Correct. correct. <laughs> so then it's 13, then 21, and then 29, and then you're dead. And then, it's, and then the game is over. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, absolutely nothing has sent somebody into a bigger rage than unmarked grave on turn two to put Parhelion into the discard. Yep. <laughs> and then you yeah. cast Grease Fang, and they're like, I quit. Get out yep. of here. Over. <laughs> The best, but, the best part about that is, uh, Grease Fang, or Grease Fang, can crew it. Yeah. So yeah, you, yeah exactly. You can turn three, cast Grease Fang, pull that out of your graveyard, and then Parhelion just on turn three, and everybody's sad, and it's yep. such a good time. I mean, except for you. I mean, oh yeah, no, exactly. Really yeah, you're, feel, you're feeling, you're feeling great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Rickers, why don't you give us the last card in your yeast section? So the last one is Peace Walker Colossus. Three generic mana for an artifact vehicle, 6-6. Six, six. Pay one and a white. Another target vehicle you control becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. It's got crew four. So this guy obviously does all the yep. work. You, you throw him down when you have him, and then the rest of your mana just goes towards, like, I don't have to crew anymore. Yeah, I, this card does a lot of work, especially like like I mentioned at the beginning in your primer, you kind of talked about struggling on the token front. So it becomes one of those things like the best way to actually get rid of a vehicle player is to get rid of the creatures to crew it. It's actually not to get rid of the vehicles. Oh, like you can have right, vehicles right, all right, the yeah. live long day, but you can't do anything with it if you can't actually turn them on. So Peace Walker is like, I would say the best backup commander in any vehicle deck, yeah. regardless of your strategy, just because... It's colorless to get it out. It's cheap to get it out. You, it doesn't have to be crude to activate its ability. Like, if it was a colorless white, if Peace Walker Colossus is a, a creature, oh, another target yeah. vehicle becomes crude, an artifact yeah. creature. Yeah. So if that would make it a lot sweatier, but it's the fact that it's just three mana, and now I'm just paying two to crew all right. my stuff. That's a way way better rate and so and, and on top it. of that on top of that you're paying three mana for a six six right that's going to play into everything else so not only is it a big beater with this ability it's just like the total package total package in a deck like this all right well that's going to wrap up the yeast section now we're going to head over to the spice and rickers take it away we only have three because I, I, kn I know that we had to kind of adjust some of the categories <laughs> so Let's just go alphabetical order. You got okay, to do it again. One. Yeah, go ahead and talk about it. Awesome. I'm glad I got the first one because this is by far the spiciest of the spice cards. Uh, Forsaken. Is it? In, in my personal opinion, this is my favorite one. Forsaken Monument. Five generic mana. Legendary artifact. Colorless creatures you control get plus two plus two. Whenever you tap a permanent for colorless mana, add an additional colorless mana. Whenever you cast a colorless spell, gain two life. So a lot of the vehicles are colorless, not all of them, unfortunately. Uh, vehicles that are crude are colorless creatures. The pilot tokens you create are colorless creatures, which means they crew for five. I That's I pretty absolutely, good. I absolutely How is this? Okay, I got, I got a challenge here too. How is this a spice? This is either a grain is, or a yeast. I, okay. I, I consider it a spice because it's not doing a ridiculous amount of work you're gaining two life most of the time, but it's not doing ridiculous amount no, of work. Oh, it's it's ramping you and also pumping your uh, creatures. Nope. No, it is not actually ramping you in this deck. It, yeah. it can with certain, but you have to remember, Tuck, whenever you tap a permanent for colorless, add an additional colorless. So basically cut out 80% of his lands in mana producers because they all produce a color of some kind. So the getting the additional colorless is only going to happen on like Soul Ring. Uh, if he did put a strip mine in here, it's going to be few and far between. You're actually going to get the additional mana. So really, I, I think the argument would more be: Would you run this for five to gain two life whenever you cast a vehicle? Which you do have a lot of artifacts, so um, you know you should be getting that two life. What uh, thirty four percent of the time? So well, they have to be colorless vehicles also. Kamigawa yeah, yeah. ruined it with all the white and black vehicles. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure, yeah. So, But 34% of your deck is a colorless card. So, uh, you know, you, you're only getting the life gain 33% of the time. 
The plus two, plus two, it's like, okay, I guess you could make an argument for the vehicle side, but I think, Tuck, where I would say it's a spice, though, I mean, we wouldn't put a Anthem effect in Yeast. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. What about the one where artifact creatures get plus three, plus three, tempered steel or whatever? That's a total Yeast card. Yeah, they're Yeast cards when you have 15 Thopters and you're able to, like, go super wide. But a lot of times, and Rickers, correct me if I'm wrong, you're probably swinging with, what, three to four vehicles at a time, maybe? Yeah, I would I would almost say two to four. Okay. Sometimes. So yeah. it's like, this is a this is a spice card, because he's he's maybe getting an additional four power per combat, maybe gaining two life every other third turn, and maybe, I don't know, every six turns, he actually has the colorless option. I mean, you just got to look at the math. <laughs> you got to look at the data. Y'all y'all, are crazy. I don't think this is a spice card at all, but... <laughs> I'm so this happy a... this... this drove this is, such heated discourse this, this is me this is this is how mr combo feels about 60 percent of my choices when i build out when i build out my list so Absolutely. i feel like i it's like it's like in uh the dark Knight rises where Catman disappears or catwoman disappears and batman goes so that's what that feels like to nobody <laughs> i this this goes in spice specifically because it's it doesn't because you hate add, me. It doesn't add an insane amount to the deck, but when it hits the table, it heats everybody up because they're like, yeah, it. oh plus sure, two to everybody. Come on, plus two to your pilot. The when somebody actually corrected me on the pilots is when I was like, this card's never leaving the deck because you don't <laughs> you don't think about pilots as colorless, and you can't uh -uh. make very many of them. I, can, I think I can reliably make like three a game. And yeah, sure. See, that's another reason why it's a spice. Ah, yeah, I'm with yeah, you, Rickers. Y'all wilding out here. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go next, and I'm going to cut, because this is actually the spice card I had picked, and I want Tuck to be heated that we're going out of order. Mech Titan Core. How oh, you hell? bastard! That's what I chose, too! <laughs> How the hell is this a spice card? This card is bananas! <laughs> Mech Titan Core, two colorless, artifact vehicle, rare. It's a 2-4 with crew 2. But you can pay five colorless, exile, mech titan four, and four other artifact creatures and or vehicles you control. Straight A, mech titan, a legendary 10-10 construct artifact creature token with <gasps> flying, vigilance, trample, lifelink, haste. That's all colors. Uh, when that token leaves the battlefield, return all cards, exile with mech titan four, except mech titan four, to the battlefield tapped under their owner's control. So I love... Love, love, love this card so much. Well, and actually, hold on. Hmm. What? I'm it's thinking incredible. I was in a, uh, no, I was thinking I'm, no, on why it's in a spice. I think I was in a game that someone misplayed how this card is supposed to be used. Not going to call them out. Because I'm pretty sure they put Mech Titan core into the graveyard once Mech Titan died, which looks like here it's supposed to stay in exile. So you only get this once. Okay, I can understand why it's in Spice now. But I love this because oh, it does exile the four and then they come back, so you're getting ETB effects. If it's your fleet wheel, it now comes in as a creature. You can now yeah. hit someone or block uh, without the crew. I, I think it does give you a lot of stuff. But okay, now I understand why it's in Spice and I'm less hot. Yeah, it's in Spice because it's an absolute bomb. You, you play it, hopefully you have that five mana ready because yeah. if you play it and you can't do it right away, you're kind of... Yep. You're it's doing like it it's, wrong. it's the uh, it's a dark depths argument, right? Of being like, oh yeah, it's great when you have this twenty twenty indestructible beast, but then someone swords the plowshares it, and you're like, well, I just burned sixteen cards to gain twenty life, I guess. So yeah. what are you gonna do about it, right? Yeah. How but many turns it, are you willing to burn? It is one hundred percent an absolute bomb because you throw it down, you pay your five, you get rid of your stuff, you make a ten ten with the every keyword that they've written, and then. It's all colors. You swing out, and then somebody's gonna try and kill it, and then you get yeah. all your stuff back. And then so that it's, I I thought it was a spice because honestly, it's more of a gimmick than like the world's most useful card. It's just crazy yeah. powerful for seven mana to be able to do that. But it's like not, it's it's like I've never it's seen like, it. I've never seen it. It's, in a it's hand. like it's like Coldrow with less with uh, less hoops to jump through, right? Yeah, yeah. I've never seen it at all it's always been somewhere in the middle of my deck <laughs> one could make the argument and i'm just saying here go with me you gotta uh, stop with the, you gotta stop with the <laughs> want to be a millionaire <laughs> hey, how about an air horn your ass all right uh so one could make an argument mech titan core is just like cyclonic rift go with me here 
Oh boy. Cy- Cyclonic Rift <laughs> on by itself is a two mana, you know, bounce one thing. And that's oh. the absolute worst you could do with that card. And nobody wants to do that. The way Rickers just described it, you don't want to play Mech Titan Core for two to just crew it for two as a two four. It's I want to do it and I would need to do it as a seven drop. I got to right, pay right, two right. then do the five. So you could really look at this very much like Cyclonic Rift. And I think with that, I think I just sold myself on moving this into a yeast because nobody puts Cyclonic Rift into a deck. And they're like, well, it's a spice because, like, I mean, you got to pay. Yeah, you seven could, you could pay seven it. for it, right? Yeah, Maybe. but really yeah. it's a two mana. And I think that's the way this card reads. Like, you're not playing it for two to crew it for two. You're playing it to pay seven and get the big gimmick. Can we all agree on that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you don't have to, you have to convince me. This was my pick two for a reason. Maybe we just rename the spice category my favorite cards in the deck category and we just move on from there. Actually, I like actually I don't I don't particularly dislike that, if I'm gonna be honest with you, because that's what it kind of boils out to. Well, I will actually say the last card in spice that Tuck's about to talk to, I completely agree with it as a spice. I actually am not yeah. a big fan of this card in general. I think you have to put a lot into it to get a little bit of a payoff, but what is that card, Tuck? Yeah, and that's Mechagodzilla Battle Fortress, a.k.a. Hangerback Water, Walker, so double X for an artifact creature construct that's a 0-0. Zero, zero. Enters the battlefield with X, 1-1 one, one counters on it. When it dies, create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying for each 1-1 one, one counter on Hangerback Water, Walker, and then a colorless and tap, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Hangerback Walker. So I think this is probably the spiciest of these in the sense of how it kind of falls in between things. For me, I see this as something where you've you kind of have flooded out early and maybe got a bad you're on like the bad end of a board wipe. So you're like, I don't really have enough to cast Grease Fang and do something, but I have a bunch of mana lying around, maybe because it's being powered up by a Forsaken Monument. I don't know. And you're like, all right, I'm effectively just gonna like skip this turn and just make this giant hanger back walker that when it eventually dies, which it will, I'll now be able to crew the next turn. Yep. But to Mr. Combo's point, I'm kind of in the same boat where you got to put a lot into it to get a little back. So I, I think it's kind of one of those, this is one of those more Hail Mary cards or I don't have anything else to do. So I'm just going to do this thing. Yeah. I, uh, I agree with that sentiment wholeheartedly. So in my experience, I can normally cast hanger back at uh, X equals three situation. So six mana, put them down with three sure, and then yeah. let them sort of sit around. And then I end up with, a leftover mana a lot so mm, it's just like mm. pay into it and then he beefs up pay into it and he beefs up and he's sort of crewing here and there but people aren't really paying attention to him and they're sort of worried about killing him at yep. the same time and i mean forbid i put down forsaken monument and then create a bunch of three three thoughts who, who knows and then who, start who, killing people yeah so anything could happen <laughs> and that's why i think it is a good spice card in this deck because it technically does when it dies it technically does give you more things to crew with yep. uh it is a mana sink for like i talked about you've kind of load your load early don't have a whole lot of places to go the, the one Nanbo with the card that I'm not a big fan of, it's you got to choose one or the other. Are you putting the plus one, plus one counter, or are you crewing? Um, I wish it could read something a little bit, and I get it, this is an older card, so that's why it reads this way. But I wish it would be more of like a one mana, put a plus one, plus one counter on Hangerback Walker, activate this once uh, during your turn. Oh, once like a turn speed. cycle or something, yeah. Yeah, I, something like that would be, okay, I could I could because then you can kind of do both things. I will submit that if it was pay one, put a counter on this card would be heavily in yeast and it would kill everybody <laughs> well no no but you could only activate it once per turn okay. now we're starting to get a lot of those effects in here yeah so that's yeah. what i'm saying like if it's just one activate it once per turn or once only during your turn then it's like okay i can kind of see the appeal of the vehicle aspect um but i think it's fine and it, it, it's yeah. fun i mean i don't get to see mecha godzilla played all that often so yeah, yeah, I, 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 I put it in there because the Mecha Godzilla foil was like five bucks, and I was like, okay, oh, so, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw that in. I'll, that I'll, I'll add that to the cart to get the free shipping bonus. Right? All right, well, let's head over to the bottle capping, and as a reminder, everyone, these are going to be King Rickers, Big Tuck, and Eyes. Three cards that we're each going to cut from the deck. We're each going to add a card that'll be under five dollars, under fifty bucks, at a no budget recommendation. We just can't talk about mana-only lands. So, I'm going to go first. I am going to cut the Brute Suit. So, Brute Suit, 
three colorless artifact vehicle. It's a four three with vigilance with crew one. It's like three cents. So we kind of alluded to this in the beginning. The deck is very streamlined. There's there's not a lot to cut. Yeah. I mean, heck, even after we got through, I don't even know if I would still cut any of the spice stuff because I like I could see the fringe stuff out there. So really just for me, Brute Suit, it was just boring. It didn't give a lot for the three mana other than just Vigilance and the fact that it could be a 4-3 blocker because the crew one's super cheap. So I, I don't know if you have any strong opinions about Brute Suit. Uh, no. Um, I think you'll notice that even before we started, that was one of the ones that was untagged because I was like, I don't know. <laughs> it's just <sort> of here. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It was a vehicle for low mana with decent stats. That's yeah. that was that's why it's here. That's one hundred percent why Fair. it's here. Yeah. Um so one thing I did is I tried to use my Saram deck to say, like, okay, what vehicles does Rickers not have that I have? Look at those differences and try to figure out like, is there a reason to bring this one in? And I did find one. And it's funny because it allows you to draw cards. Uh, and I'm usually like the person anti putting in things that draw cards. But this is something, it's a vehicle. It's going to be able to help you provide value later in the game. Um, you'll be able to bring stuff back. And it's an ETB, so you're always going to get it with Grease Bang. I think it's worth looking at Bomat Bizarre Barge for the deck. Oh. Four colorless artifact vehicle, uncommon from Kaladesh. It's a 5-5, five five, and it has crew three for 18 cents. But here's why I think it's good in the deck. When it ETBs, draw a card. So we're basically saying go up a mana, draw a card, and we've increased our power toughness by plus one, two. I know that the crew's a bit more, but I, I don't know. I, I feel like where this deck would stymie, because the thing I love about my SRAM deck is I always have access to card draw in my command zone based on all these crappy artifacts that yeah. I'm playing. Um, you don't have that with Grease Fang. You have great value. It's just, I feel like if you ever get to that point of like, I need to draw something else, I don't see tons of ways to be able to easily do that. So I think if we do this swap, it, it could give you that value later on. I mean, what do you think of the Bowmat? Uh, I actually like it a lot. So I know the crew's higher, which is like the one downside you even know. Yeah. But at the same time, if my absolute bottom end is crew with Grease Fang, to swing out and then maybe i get a chance for them to not want to take five and i get to draw a card on my next combat that's like that's great that seems yeah. great so uh outside i mean brute suit like you mentioned does essentially nothing it just cruises for one <laughs> so so it cruises for one and it yeah it, and it doesn't yeah. it, it can defend for three the next turn also so that's that's all that's all i could say for brute suit on a plus side and bowmat yeah. Outside of that, it's just like much more interesting. Like the more text you add to the cards, the the better yeah. it fits into the vehicle deck. That's yeah, for sure. and the uh, bigger screen Tuck needs to read it. Yeah, I got a long, I got a big one for mine. I got a bit a lot of a lot of reading to do. So, all right, Tuck, well, then give us your uh, yeah, I'll get into cut. it. So I'm gonna cut Oval Chase Dragster for kind of the same reason. So uh, it's four colors for an artifact vehicle. That's a six one Trample and Haste, and it's got a crew one. So um, I think this is fine. Uh, you'll probably have something to crew it. I like the one that you had mentioned earlier. When it enters the battlefield, it enters as an artifact, so you don't even have to worry about cruising. Like you don't even have to worry about crewing it. So for me, it's just kind of like if we have to cut something, we probably have some excess vehicles that maybe are kind of cute or like just re just repeating the same thing. So in my opinion, this is one where it's kind of like it's fine, but if we have to cut something, this would be one that would be on the list for me. Hmm. But I'm going to be replacing it because we're going to be tapping a lot of things, right? We're tapping left, right, and center. We're going to be creating a lot of things to tap and untap. So what about having some way that we can untap, create new pilots, draw a card, and then ultimately win the game with what am I? I think this is, maybe, this is like my new pseudo murder, Halo Fountain. <laughs> <laughs> Two colorless and a white for an artifact, an artifact from Streets of Capenna. It's a mythic for it's just under the $5 it. budget. Three six six. <laughs> colorless and a white. Tap. Untap target creature you control. Create a 1-1 one, one, green and white green citizen creature token. Two, co two white tap. Untap two target creatures you control. Draw a card. Four, uh, sorry, five white untap. Five white tap. Untap 15 target creatures you control. You win the game. 
Why not? Why not put it in here? You already have the artifact creatures with what you're crewing, or the things that have been crewed. You get to create more pilots, you get to draw cards, and then maybe win the game? Who knows? I don't know, but now you have your engine to create more pilots, and you also have your engine to draw cards. Slam dunk! In a, th in a three, in an artifact, in an artifact card! Well, here's the thing, though. You can't run uh, intruder alarm, so what's the point? <laughs> why, <laughs> why bother? Yeah. Oh, man. That's a... Uh... It's it's certainly not a bad suggestion. That pay two to untap two tapped creatures, like and draw a card, that's a that's a defensive like I really like that. If this just said that, I'd I'd probably almost like the card more. That pay five oh. just looks bad. <laughs> it just looks I bad. know, it looks terrible. Pay but five I, like, to untap I'm hot I'm hot on I'm hot on this card because there's one guy I played with Ken, Kenshi. He's he like was a pseudo pro player back in the day. So I have whenever you try to recommend cards to him, he always poo poos them. It's like Mr. Combo on steroids. Like Mr. Con like it's it's even it's way worse. Like Mr. Combo is usually like, yeah, I appreciate it, but I think I'm going to go in a different direction. He's like, no, you're stupid, and here's why. And I told him to put this in a deck, and he was he literally in the message was like, God damn it. <laughs> like, I can't you got me. The one time I got him. So I'm hot on this card. I'm trying to shovel it in as much as I can. Well, I'll say the one thing I do like about the card is it does one of my favorite things in Magic. Commander specifically makes off color tokens oh, yeah, yeah, what your yeah, deck yeah, is. Yeah. The fact that we're getting Silencia citizen creature tokens, let's go. Even better. What's not to like? You got to recruit citizens into your biker gang. Yeah, see, exactly. <laughs> you're turning these citizens into criminals. It's just it's well, exactly yeah, what the cause, communists want. Because technically, what you're doing is you're recruiting the neighborhood watch. So that way, when you do your illegal bike races, it's like, oh, the, yeah, yeah, they're on my side. Yeah, they're it's good. Okay. Yeah, they're on, they're on the level. All right, Rickers, you mentioned you've streamlined this deck quite a bit, and I know from personal experience, whenever you build a deck, and you've only played it a handful of times, and it's very fresh, or you feel like you have it at the right spot, it's hard to cut cards and add them. What did you decide, though, to cut and add to this bad boy? So, the cut card, I mean, I also wasn't the biggest fan of how Oval Chase Dragster Oh, acted. okay. I could choose another one that I have. No, no, that's up. perfect. Okay, so that was probably <laughs> yeah. what I was going to take out. But a card that I saw fresh out of uh, Legends Baldur's Gate is Mighty Servant of Liuk O. I don't know if it's L-E-U-K hyphen O. Oh, yeah, it's almost kind of spelled with meaning like leukemia. Yeah. Just without yeah. the emia. Yeah, Mighty Servant. The oh. Mighty Servant of Luke O. Oh, it's sure. Three generic mana artifact vehicle, so swapping a vehicle for a vehicle, pretty sweet. Uh, trample, ward, discard a card for people who want to get rid oh, of it. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Whenever Mighty Servant of Luko becomes crewed for the first time each turn, if it was crewed by two creatures, exactly two creatures, it gains whenever this creature deals combat, combat damage to a player, draw two cards until end of turn, and it's a 6-6. Six, six. So crew four, you can hit that yeah. pretty easy. Crew and two creatures, um, just seems insane for a high yeah, like sick. nineteen cents. That's that's really sick. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's uh, that's real good. Uh, if, I, if I could do my Robert De Niro face, like mm, okay, it's real, it's real good. Oh, it's real good. Uh, yeah, you got nipples. You got nipples. Lap. You got, you got, you got nipples combo. You can milk me. Well. Here's a question I have for your Rickers. Would you ever use one of your targeted spells or abilities on Mighty Servant to just discard a card? Or is Ward only say opponents? Uh, I think, are they Ward might I think only it's say opponents. It's opponents. Ward it's opponents. might be Damn. opponents. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, like, it's like Hexproof versus Shroud. Yeah. Yeah. So that would have been cool because then it's like you have ways to cheat your stuff into the graveyard. But I even think without that kind of very sweaty thought that I had, <laughs> I think it's still great. Um... Well, I was gonna say you could like you could like plunder it, like costly plunder it, discard a card, then sack it, then draw two. But yeah, yeah. My, Unfortunately, my big, that's illegal. My big thought on how, because like normally in this deck, right, you wouldn't want your vehicles to have ward because it's like a gift when somebody kills it. This one, you don't really get anything for it dying and coming back. Yeah. It doesn't have an ETB. It's just more useful to have around to to crew and draw some cards off of. So. I enjoyed the also, board. I'd like to point out it was kind of stupid for a very fringe case when they have to say crude for the first time each turn right. uh, as a condition because it has to do combat damage to a player anyways. 
And if you get extra combats, you still get it because it has it doesn't decrew itself until the end of turn. So literally, that one line of text is only there to like if you crewed it and then someone murdered it and then you brought it back with Grease Fang, you wouldn't be able to like get the effect. Which that's oh, such a fringe, yeah. stupid thing Silly. to think about. Um, so I it's like there's a lot of text on here. Let's get rid of that wizard. Come on. <laughs> yeah, they're they're trying to hit that uh, that text yeah. record. Like this set has more text than the last set. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, for reals. Just All right, get to my last one. Let's go to under 50, and uh, we already kind of talked about it, uh, but I'll, I'll give a little bit more into my thoughts. I'm cutting Drum Bellower, so don't need to retap tap the card. Uh, the biggest reason is if you had the Luck and Ori in here, I would keep it. Uh, because yeah. then you actually have a way to take your things that crew and put them into the vehicles and actually be able to do it. Uh, I don't know if you'd want to run Belluck and Ori and Drum Bellower just for that synergy. I don't know if that warrants a slot, or not Belluck and Ori. Uh, unwinding Clock is what I meant. Um, so I don't know if you'd want to necessarily do it just for that fringe case, but I just, okay, cool, I got some 1-1s, one and yeah, I guess I could chump block, but I don't know. That, to me, if you're worried about cards making you the target, I feel like Drum Bellower is going to, even though you said it's not, to me... That's the card's like, oh well, I got to get rid of that. I can't have him. Can't have Richards yeah. get free value. So I don't know. It's it's just it's a sure. But for it. what would be better? Because your deck is such low CMC, and you know what, Mister Tree Folk Lord, and all of your well, hey, but it's on Mox Field, and you know what? It's, even if it doesn't apply to you, it's fine. Other people like it. Well, here's an ability that technically cares about the whole land stupid. With CMC thing. Pain Seer. Colorless black. It's a 2 2 creature human wizard. Oh. It's rare. It has inspired. Whenever Pain Seer becomes untapped, reveal the top card of your library, put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to that card's converted mana cost. So, great way to kind of get a dark, confident S yes. effect. Yep. But for way, way cheaper on the dollars. Uh, Literally the promo the promo version with the alternate art, the most expensive that you can get is of a dollar and fifty-seven cents. Yep. And I will say that promo art's actually pretty slick. Yeah, it actually looks pretty slick. <laughs> um so you know, you're gonna get that dark confident effect for uh, a hundredth of the cost or whatever it actually is. Um and this also still kind of ties into technically if you wanted to do the uh, unwinding clock drum bellower effect, then Pain Seer is even that much better. Because then you're crewing and it's untapping, so you're getting to draw a card every single person's turn. So that's kind of a fun way in Orzov to get card advantage. But I think at its floor, where you're just getting this once a turn, I think it's still great. And it's a two powers. So it'll be able to yeah. crew a fair amount of your vehicle. Uh, I, I like this suggestion a lot. That'll be finding a slot for sure. I'd never heard yeah. of this card before. Uh, I don't know if it's taking drum bellowers just because of what you said at the end there, where I could possibly draw four cards a turn. That almost sounds. <laughs> you got to figure out a way to tap it, though. You got to figure out a way to constantly just tap it. Leave some, leave some vehicles. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's the that's the glass ceiling, right? You got to break. Yeah, right. but I do like this card a lot. I'd I'd never seen that. That's great. Yeah, that's Two mana. All right. Yeah. Well, Tuck, what are you gonna cut and add for under fifty bucks? So I have to give you a wag of the finger on something earlier because I'm actually going to cut Unmarked Grave. And this is sad to me because I love this card and I cannot find a, a deck for it. And the reason why you're a scumbag and your friends immediately kill you first is because you cheesed them on this card big time. And here's as to why. So Unmarked Grave is a colorless and a black for a sorcery. Search your library for a non-legendary non card Put that card in your graveyard, then shuffle. So your turn three Parhelion yeah, two par dreams You're right. are in fact cheating the game. So I just think that th I think you have all, so many better options of things like anything that all the ones that you have that do this are on creatures, which I think you really need to crew the vehicles. And this is kind of being a one shot that you're never going to be able to get back because you don't care about instances and sorceries for me. Just was like uh, <clears throat> again trying to find things that are tough. It's a tough cut, right? But I think that one's. I think that one's up there. And the one I want to replace is a little expensive. It's the most expensive one I have out here. But you talked about like discarding, right? Being an option. So in my opinion, this card that has been talked about a little bit on Magic Twitter called Insidious Dreams is really interesting here. So three colors and a black for an instant. And it says, as an additional cost to play Insidious mm. Dreams, discard X cards from your hand. 
and then search your library for X cards, then shuffle your library and put those cards on top of it in any order. So for me, this kind of is like a expensive version of potentially diabolic tutor, right? With a little bit of a kicker. If you have your Parhelion in hand and just want to discard it, now you can go tutor for your next best card at the beginning of the other person's end step, right? If you have three vehicles and you want to make your opponents try to exile your graveyard from there, I just like this, even though it stacks the top of your deck and if people are going to like mill you or whatever, then fine. But I just like the fact that this is going to be a tutor that also will let you discard and fill up your graveyard from as soon as turn two or three, depending on what you're looking at. All right. That's a that's a hard swallow. It's a, spice, <laughs> it's a spicy one, right? It's a it's, spice. It's a spicy pick for sure. It's definitely a little sweaty. It's a hard swallow. I do like that recommendation a lot. I don't know if I like the swap out cards you chose, but um, oh sure, that recommendation paired up with uh, there's a card in my deck, Incarnation Technique, which mills five cards. Yes. So you could stack it up with a bunch of vehicles, and then you're set for the next little bit. I think that's a really interesting sort of like double play there. Sure. But um, I was even thinking another angle where maybe it's turn four and uh, like all your hand, like you kept you kept a three lander or whatever, and you just didn't draw any land or a four lander and you didn't draw anything. And it's like turn four about to go into turn five. And it's like, crap, I got a hand full of vehicles. I'm not drawing lands. I almost look at this as like I'd pay for discard my hand to just tutor up the lands and then it's like okay my lands are set yeah. up the next five turns or my ramp and, and i got and then you got turns. and oh mr combo to your point now you can like if i know i can get my land guess what now grease i can bang. play now i can play grease bang and all those things are i'm just right back in and then guess what those vehicles bounce back to hand great i can just play them crew them with grease bang on the further turn yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that is it's such an insane ability to stack your next five draws yeah yeah <laughs> that's, that's just playing not playing mill or god help you someone playing alter the brood <laughs> if you are playing someone playing Alter of the Brood, just stack five sweet vehicles on top and hope they oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Easy enough. <laughs> and, then, and then you put the Alter of the Brood person, me, in the conundrum of like, ooh, I want to play permanents, but he probably stacked vehicles there and I'm just helping fuel his deck. It'll yeah. be like Marin all over again. Turn him <laughs> off. All right. Well, Rickers, give us your under 50 cut and add. All right, so not only am I probably going to keep Unmarked Grave in the deck, my under Scumbag. 50 add, which is a card that I need to pick up, is uh, Entomb. So, oh, uh, sure. Yeah, a yeah, version yeah. that can let me turn three Parhelions. Yeah, there, <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> one black mana, instant, search your library for a card, put that card into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. And Yeah, it's uh, slam dunk. Yeah, it's it's just one of those ones where 30. you're building the cart and you hit that God. like 30, 30 buck card and you're like, all right, maybe that one waits. <laughs> wow, Mr. Rest. Combo, I got some great news for you. So oh, okay. what do you think the cheapest version of the of Entomb that you can get is? Uh, I'm going to go, uh, is it Collector's Edition or something that's going to make me really upset? What do you think the cheapest version that you can get is? And like what is the Mounter Edition. And, and what, is the, what is the price difference between... What, what okay? What do you think this? What do you think this is going to go for? I think in tombs probably a thirty-two dollar card. Wow, very close. Uh, Thirty-three for Ultimate Masters. Good job. And because people know where the real value is, you can get the World Champ deck for only twenty-two dollars. It's only thirteen dollars <laughs> cheaper to get an unplayable card. The gold boarded baby. Okay. Well, Rickers, what card would you be cutting for in tomb? Oh, yeah, I skipped right over that. So a card that just really doesn't do anything for me is uh, Oval Chase Dragster. Or not mm, Dragster. You already cut uh, that earlier. Daredevil. Daredevil. They've the got Daredevil, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I was going to cut that too, but I was too lazy to look through and see if you had some sort of loop with Sorry. it or something. <laughs> you totally called me out, right? <laughs> yeah, but so it's just, I don't know. The Returning it from the graveyard to hand, it costs four to play. It's uh, Yeah. It's yep. really like it's a really clunky interaction, and I feel like it belongs in a deck that generates mana off of sacrifice loops. And it's uh, it's really, I haven't liked it. Every time I've yeah. had it, I was it's it's a it, it's a crew for it's a crew four card. Like I said, really. it's yeah. about on the list for me. I just was like, I don't want it to sound stupid if I cut this and there's actually some loop with it. So no, I didn't have one. Um, I just liked so. The big problem that I had when I was first setting this deck up was you need creatures to crew vehicles. So I had yeah. this one, and then this one gets itself back. So yeah, I wouldn't run out of creatures, but even with that, it's it doesn't do a lot. 
No, that's fair. Well, yep. maybe when we go to the next section, you may want to put it right back into the deck because I might be helping with some of these loops. <laughs> Uh, so let's go to our no budget section and I'm going to start with just, uh, man, there's just better, better vehicles out there. We're going to cut Aradara Express. It's a five drop artifact mm. vehicle. It's an eight, six with menace and crew four yeah. for eight cents. I don't know. It's, it's kind of the same reason I cut the, the first vehicle. It's just, if you're not giving me something else other than vigilance or menace, I just don't know if you're worth it. It's also one of those vehicles that was sitting in the untagged section because it's just sort of like <laughs> such, such a vanilla card that it's like I pay mana and yeah. now I have a thing. It's fine. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I unfortunately I I thought of one at the last minute that you could do, um, but I'll, I'll kind of hit my boring ones first. I know that these are usually like kill that player now cards, but I think you can do a lot with an altar of some kind. If you do Ashnod's altar, you could crew a vehicle, sack the thing that crewed it, that gets you two colorless mana. You're now able to cast your vehicles that much quicker. Um, because if you guys aren't familiar, three colorless, it's an artifact, sacrifice a creature, add uh, colorless, colorless. Hey, that gets you uh, your Forsaken Monument. Boom. Boom. Uh, gets you another one. Uh, so that's one if you're trying to like get out your vehicles quicker. Um, I think that's a good one. The other one that I think is worth looking at is Phyrexian Altar. It's the same thing, guys. It's just when you sack a creature, you get a colored mana. Because I'm starting to think, like, what if you swung in, you're all tapped out, and they're like, okay, well, let's throw, let's block here because he has Cranial Plating. Well, you could just sacrifice a couple of the creatures that you use to crew your vehicles and then instantly move that over, and you don't need to leave mana open. So I think there's, a, I think you actually can do some sacrifice Orzov themes in here, um, and it's going to bring a lot of value. But I didn't want to just go boring, so I think God favored general you should consider putting in. Is this another inspired? It is. Yes! Colorless white. It's a 1-1 one, one creature human soldier. Inspired. When it becomes untapped, you may pay two colorless white if you do put two 1-1 one, one white soldier enchantment creature tokens onto the battlefield. So you talked about needing more things to be able to crew with. I think it's a fair trade-off because the nice thing is it's at upkeep and you don't have, it's not like you have to pay three or it stays tapped. Um, so you can you'll you'll kind of have your hand. You won't have the card you drew, but you at least have your hand and be like, okay, do I need the three mana this turn, or would I rather have two additional crewable uh, creatures yeah. to be able to help with my strategy? And I you can get this card for twenty three cents. cents. Oh, or twenty three cents. Yeah. So I guess let's first pause, Rickers. Specifically, what do you think of the altar aspect? Because I'm sure there's a reason you didn't put them in. But then let's, as a group, kind of talk about um, God Favorite General. So the number one reason that I don't have uh, an altar of Phyrexia or an Ashnod's altar in the deck is because I don't have either of those cards. Okay. <laughs> I, I, oh, I, have, I have an altar of Dementia, which doesn't quite uh, achieve the same ends. <laughs> <laughs> nope. But um. The God favored general card seems really neat, and it definitely fits that mana sync that I was using it ex as an excuse for uh, some other cards earlier. Mm -hmm. So, if only it created colorless soldier enchantment creature tokens. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I do like it. I think that I think I might even have one of those in my uh, in my box. Oh, somewhere. nice. So good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love I love God favored. I love God favored general. I think any of these inspired things are just going to be like. Money in the bag, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're going to be tapping creatures anyway, so you might as well get some value out of them when they untap. For yeah, sure. and I guess it's kind of, if you do keep the drum bellow in, this is a good mana sink for each turn. Mm -hmm. it's like, well, I had a bunch of mana left over. Well, I, you know, was technically threatening nine. Well, I guess I'll just pay three, and I only threatened with six. Oh, your turn. Oh, well, I guess I'll just threaten with three. And the next person's <laughs> turn, it's like, well, I don't give a crap now. I'll just use yeah, all exactly. my mana. Yeah, do it at upkeep. Yeah. All right, well, Tuck. Give us your cut and add if we're going to make Rickers become homeless. Very, uh, it's not. It's very, it's relatively cheap. Uh, I am going to cut. This was really tough because, again, there's just not, there's just, it, you do, it is very streamlined. But I'm going to cut Armix uh, Filigree Thrasher. So I see where you're going with it. I can see your expression. Mr. Combo had this in one of his chaos builds, and it was a monster in there. I just, 
I don't know. I, I don't think this card does quite enough here. So two colorless and a black for a 3-2 legendary artifact creature golem. It's not a vehicle. When it attacks, you may discard a card. When you do, target creature defending player controls gets minus X, minus X, so on the turn, where X is the number of artifacts you control plus the number of artifacts cards in your graveyard. I get it, right? Like, it's a removal spell. I just don't like it because it only targets one thing. And you have to... I think you also have to attack with it and it's only that's a three correct. two right that, so that's why i don't like it it's because you have yeah. to attack with it it's not even like when it becomes tapped you or if it or if it was like when you attack on your turn if it's yeah. untapped or whatever it, it, so for me i just it just seems like it's a little too sweaty for this for what it does it's fair but i do like the discard i get where you're going again this was difficult so i'm going to cut it for another card which i'm guessing you will be talking about shortly as well which is another new one from uh, Baldur's Gate called Not a Lloyd Ship. So this is four colorless for a 5-5 artifact creature vehicle. It's a mythic. Um, and it has flying. And then when it enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. And then it has whenever Not a Lloyd Ship deals combat damage to a player, you may put a creature card exiled Not a Lloyd Ship on the battlefield under your control, Crew 3. So you're going to have to kind of be smart about it, right? You're going to have to figure out who's the real threat here. If someone's playing Marin, if someone's playing some sort of Carador reanimator, you wait, you wait, you wait, and just right when they're getting ready to go off, you can, bam, slam this guy down, exile it, start crewing it the next turn, and start getting that value right back for you. So, again, I think if you look at like the van- like some of the more vanilla uh, vehicles you have in the deck, this one does a lot more and gives you a lot more like of a hops environment to, to prevent someone who's also playing a graveyard deck from going off. Yeah, I definitely had not a late ship in my sights. It's not one that I chose for any of these. Now I'm now I'm pretty glad because we get to talk about another card. <gasps> but uh, another one, another card. But this this just like that other the Legends Baldur's Gate stuff. There's some really cool vehicles that they yeah. stuffed into this set. This one's well, and I'll really say cool. this because th- this card's a bomb. But I think this is just going to further cement Rickers. Like, when you can pick up one of the altars, you need to. Because being able to sacrifice this and then be able to bring it back, and then you're just constantly exiling oh, hitting someone's another graveyard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Now, that, now that's another pile of stuff that maybe you can, like, you know, maybe the first one you used to did it because it was all instant sorceries, and it's like, I got to stop the combo. But then maybe the next person, it's, like, actual creatures that you want. But I, I think that, like, if any... I mean, think about it. If you could repeat Bajukabog with no additional effect, you would do it. And I yeah. just look at this as a repeat Bajukabog with more upside and easier to get back from the graveyard in your deck. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do like the Nautilus ship a lot. I think good. It's a, it's aggressive <laughs> and it's gonna make people upset. And it's everything I wanted. <laughs> All right. Well, Rickers, close out the bottle capping and kind of the episode. Give us your final cut and your final ad if you could spend any amount of doll hair as possible. All right. So my final cut, to make it dramatic, is going to be the Conqueror's Galleon. I do not enjoy <gasps> how it's Yeah, it interesting. I almost cut that, but I feel yeah. like it's kind of on the boat, but it. there's so much value. Yeah, it, there's a lot of value there. But it's also like, so when it attacks, you exile it, and then you have your like fancy land that can... Yeah, trading posts, the land, yeah. draw cards, and um, <clears throat> it sort of gets around what the deck wants to do and doesn't really play with everything else while it's got its own utility. But what does play with everything else and lets me hit my eight cards all the time and actually hits a pretty risky non-budget section but is... Before we go to that card, though, you do know oh, that nice. this would be a cool, funny synergy with the one altar you do have, Altar of Dementia, oh, you attack, yeah. you do your damage, end of combat trigger, you sacrifice it, someone mills 10. Is it power or toughness? I think it's power. Is it power? Okay. power yeah. if, if it's power, then yeah, never mind. Because I was going to say, if it's toughness, holy hell. <laughs> mix, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Cut the card. Yeah, I think Conqueror's Galleon has to go. Um, but what I want to put in instead is Anvil of Boggarden. Mm. Oh, yeah. Two colorless mana artifact. Each player skips his or her discard phase. And during each player's draw phase, that player draws an additional card and then chooses and discards a card. So I'm just continuously filtering through my deck at warp speed 
ruining everybody's day. Their hands are all full of crap that they either can't cast or don't want to use. But I've just got vehicles coming out left and right for a nice piece. A nice piece of magic history for you as well for forty five dollars. <laughs> yeah, for forty five bucks. So I, I've I've had my eyes on that one and have never found a real it, solid reason to pull the trigger. <laughs> it, you got but, one now, man. It's only yeah. gonna, it's only gonna go up. So and yeah, that is that is a really good card. I like that quite a bit. Yep. Now I, I do think you kind of run into the uh, challenge, and I don't know about your play group, but there's so much card draw happening now. And like the one, it one thing you could do against a card draw player is like, well, they got to discard down to hand size at the end of turn, unless they have a reliquary tower or a spell book, something like that. Thought vessel. So yeah. it, it kind of yeah, and so this kind of does give your opponents the no maximum hand size, which is a little unfortunate because, you know, that could come back and bite you in the butt. So I see the advantage of the discard, but I would say if this was in your pile today, I'd probably qualify it as a spice because very much it could be the hand that feeds you or the hand that bites you. Yeah, ends the game <laughs> the a little too The fast. closed fist or the open palm. <laughs> but um, I've, I've liked it. Uh, I think if it... It goes in this deck, and it just gets me blown out of the water too many times. I'll just throw it into, like, my Turok discard deck and then ruin it. Oh, yeah, there you over go. There. <laughs> but. Well, guys, um, that was awesome. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a five-star review. Uh, subscribe. Do all the stuff, whether it's on YouTube, Twitch, podcasts, all those good things. Um, if you'd like to get a hold of us, here's how you can do that. You can get a hold of me at Mr. 5 on Twitter. I'll spell that at 5. Big Tuck, where can people get a hold of you? I am at Big Tuck Tweeting on Twitter. I did some shit posting this week as requested, so there you go. <laughs> you can reach our main account at CMD Tower on Twitter as well. Uh, we will have King Ricker's deck list posted, the video, the audio, and um, all of our picks and cuts at cmdtower.com slash bnbe148. Basically type in cranial plating, mech hanger, and I've been wanting to say this, damn, tower. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Uh, and if you are looking to support CMD Tower, there's a lot of myriad ways, uh, not redundant because we didn't talk about myriad today, uh, that you could do that. Patreon.com slash CMD Tower, Etsy.com, CMD Tower in the search bar, or AbyssProxyShop.com using code CMD Tower. All three ways are all ways that you can support the channel in some sort of financial manner. So that way we can continue to pump out quality content for you. So, Bruise and Patrons, Grease Fangs Garage, let's start with good old Rickers. First, did you have fun? B, did you learn something about the deck? And Roman numeral number three, are you going to do any of our cuts and ads? Go. Oh, tons of fun. This was a great hang. You guys are awesome. Uh, I learned a decent amount about my own cards and what rules are on them. Stop telling people unmarked <laughs> grave puts Parhelion into the graveyard. And, uh, hey, some hey, look, listen, it, it happens a lot. I get put in my place every once in a while. Mr. Combo has a flip, has a flip, and puts in a band card and the cuts and ads. It happens. To, to my own credit, I don't think I've ever tried to do it in a game with unmarked grave, but maybe on spell table, I'll see what can slip by. Uh, <laughs> But absolutely, Pain Sears, a slam dunk. Halo Fountain yep. is actually pretty interesting with the pay two. Oh, I knew it. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll give God favor to try, and Insidious Dreams we'll 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 think about. Sure. But um, you guys had a lot of really cool uh, really cool suggestions that I think will fit. And then there was well, a third a, that's, one. That's what that's what we do here. I yeah, and I'll say I, I had a I had a ton of fun talking about the deck because I've played against Marketing Ross's Grease Fang deck because kind of what he did is he created, I don't know if you saw this in the Discord, but he created kind of a actual garage where he has, I think, 70 cards that are white, and then he can just have 30 cards or 35 cards he could put in that make it Orzov or Boros, oh, yeah, yeah, all yeah. vehicle decks. Um, so I've played against his Grease Fang deck, and I'll say... His was interesting. I really enjoyed it and the flexibility. But now seeing an actual dedicated Grease Fang deck, I can see kind of how that power, and if you really yeah. lean into what this guy can do or Rat can do, um, it's super cool. I, I hope I can play it against uh, you with this and Spell Table in the future, or even, um, you know, if you end up coming on um, Slinging Cardboard Rectangles at some point. Um, I think this would be very interesting because I've never played against a Grease Fang deck that is only a Grease Fang deck. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's really fun. I think I think it's really well built. Um, I think these ones are really fun. I think this is like a it's like fair, but like has the juice in it. You know, I think you cutting personally. I think you keeping like smothering tide and that sort of things out of there makes the deck a lot more unique. Um, and the, which I like a lot. Uh, no offense, Mister Combo or anyone else out there that are the tide that are the tide people. So yeah, man, I, this is really fun. We really appreciate you taking the time and hopping on with us. Yeah, it was lots of fun. I definitely need to uh, play with you again, Combo. That one game we played where I played that Alayla deck that did absolutely nothing for seven turns was uh, <laughs> was less than substantial in my mind. Um, so so having a chance to actually come at you a little bit would be would be great. Uh, oh, holy hell. Well, I, I guess whenever you do come at me, I'll play my six CMC tribal deck I'm building. Uh, oh, we'll see go. how they go. <laughs> All right. Cue the music. Help.